I mean, unless you want to do some bullshit and just to make sure we can sync this up really good. Like as a test run, it'll be like three, two, one, clap. I'll start and then you just kind of lead in and lead into it. Okay. Okay. Three, two, two one. one. drinking some urine uh things are getting pretty bad in vancouver so i've resorted to drinking my own urine there's plenty of water don't worry they haven't shut it off or anything but, yeah uh, no i don't know why i would stay that? safe <laughs> I, just stay, I just want to stay pure well i mean we take if we take survival skills from bear grills we'll be all be fine all right <laughs> i'm literally just digging on the ground eating mealworms and centipedes um and just completely avoiding uh, any grocers, any green grocers, any uh, vegetation. Listen, whatsoever. just stay calm, eat bugs, and you'll be fine, all right? That's all yeah, it takes. Yeah. <laughs> eat the soup, bigot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I got it. Oh, no, you caught it. I heard a slight cough. Uh, yeah, the slightest of cough. I must have it now. Yeah. Where we can start off is, uh, I guess, how would you like to describe yourself? Oh God! Um, <laughs> hi, my name is Mark English. Um, I'm a raper. I <laughs> I have no. I, I can't see, <laughs> that's the thing. I I guess that's a good that's a good primer. I'm somebody who really rarely ever takes anything fucking seriously. Um, and if I if, I mean that, that's not 100 percent true. If you see even like my Twitter, like I'll get serious sometimes. But I think that just by default, I'm a human being that thinks that humor sort of solves almost every single situation i've sort of lived my life by that fucking mantra and i'm not trying to get deep or anything like that like it's really it's like not not the not the copy pasta fucking meme but uh it really isn't that deep but i do think that like i just live my life literally um based on what's entertaining and uh what's funny and what kind of that's like that like i'm a shark and that's the only thing keeping me going that's blood in the water for i me. mean i would say more like a hyena but you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got the laugh at least. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, uh, fuck. There's, there's not much else. I guess I consider myself an artist, but like, that's debatable. Do, you, do you want me to throw it out there then? I promise okay, not sure. to drool too much. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Oh my God. So, I mean, you are an editor. You are yep. uh, a streamer. I would say yes. a YouTuber. I would say yep. uh, an artist. Uh, and yeah, why didn't I say? Why didn't I say the shit that I actually do? I'm like getting all philosophical. Jesus Christ, this is why I don't do interviews often. Well, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, but it's philosophical. It also helps you learn who you are on a more personal level. Yeah, I, I think that's the point. I, I think that sometimes if I'm ever like exposing myself, I want people to get like an accurate picture. Yeah, so um, that you're not just the funny haha man all the time. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's true actually. I, I, we might even talk about that, but like, there's a there's a certain level to it where I have some sort of insecurity about how I'll be forever perceived as the haha funny man. But like, there's a certain level to which you have to embrace that. That like that could become your life, but you can't hate yourself or society for it. Essentially. Yeah. No, and I I I get that. It's it's something I struggle with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So. I do have a list of questions. You gave me what Ooh. thirty minutes. I can whittle it down. <laughs> oh fuck it! I, I, that was that was a like that was before because I thought I was gonna be on a tight schedule, but I've already wasted even my own personal time. So you know, let's just go. And then okay. <laughs> when you think we're done, we're done. <laughs> okay. I, I, I mean, was I was I was yeah I was like, preparing the, to like sit down. Whenever the the conversation drains on you, let me know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll just I'll just start screaming. That's it. Just. Just a just, screech like a fucking banshee. Just start getting expon moaning just exponentially louder. <laughs> uh, uh, like that's gonna be like the primer, and then yeah. <laughs> it's gonna get worse from there. All right. So I did have. Uh, speaking of you actually considering yourself an artist, I did have a few things about uh, art. Um. Uh, I didn't know if I wanted to bring this to kind of who you follow on Twitter and like what artists you actually follow and kind of take influence from. So would you Ooh. happen to know most of them or, or most of them in uh, like Japanese kanji? <laughs> uh, oh God. Um, 
Well, I guess there's um, in, ter in terms of artists that I follow. Oh God, that's there's a, there's such a array. In fact, I mean, like the majority of the people that I follow on Twitter, if if you'll look, are pretty much just fellow artists. I fucking I fucking love propping other people up. I love supporting artists and the arts so fucking much. It's like, um, and I it, like, and I and I never would have found myself saying that. Um, probably because I never did consider myself one. Uh oh, woofoo. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh my god. <clears throat> I actually think it's my uh my tea. It's super phlegmy. I, I made like a uh, chai tea, and it's like it's, so it's just milk. And I think it's like flemming up me up really bad. It's the best drink to have before an interview. Yeah, um, no, definitely, definitely chai as opposed to like maybe a chamomile. <laughs> to like or, a green tea or, or Earl some Grey lemon. would have been anything. <laughs> no, you had to get the most like milky. I get, I get milk, milk tea. <laughs> 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 Fucking phlegm central. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is why I'm not a voice actor either. People keep asking me. I was like, oh, Mark, you do so many funny little cute voices you should become a voice actor it's like uh no it's because it, i'm not an actor i'm just a fucking goofy boy yeah um but uh what was this uh so yeah m i mostly follow artists and i would have never thought to prop uh get so excited about art and the art community and artists alike until i kind of felt like i was a, a part of that like i got taken into the fold i made i made some incredible friends online um uh just just in the last couple of years and they've been amazing and i just i just like i just see these people as like way more important than me and like half the time i'm like i wish i could just get bigger just so i could like promote these people better like the per like the like mini who is uh doing all of my thumbnails who does like all the channel art for me yeah she's she's fucking amazing and we literally found each other on twitter uh, as a result, and a lot of my friendships ended up just being us finding each other on Twitter because I just follow artists, and then either I or they took the plunge into talking to each other, and then we just hit it off. Like like Hyojin does some amazing stuff. I oh, love yeah. Bung's fucking uh, his uh, confinement series and the Bung Chronicles prior to that. Mm -hmm. Fucking amazing. And he he's he's such a like I I just want to fucking prop these people up. But in terms of, like, favorites, I would say some of the ones that I just mentioned. Yeah. There's a lot of, um... I do follow a lot of lewd artists, too. <laughs> That's, like, something you'll fucking catch me doing on Twitter. I'm not exactly that shy about it. But, I mean, uh, I... <laughs> That's pretty much the only thing I use for Twitter right now, so I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now that we're all shut-ins, we have to adopt it. Uh, Tofu Bear, uh, shout-out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, Tofu Bear is great. Um... I but actually that's mostly like drawn and like hand drawn like in animation. I'd say like other artists, uh, Daniel Peters, who is a filmmaker. Uh, I think he's based out of the UK or I think it's the UK. Uh, he's really good. I follow him like to the T. Indie mogul, uh, Film Riot. Uh, oh God, what is his name? Uh, it's definitely it's Casey wrong. Neistat. That's who it is. <laughs> Absol absolutely, Casey Neistat. Um, he told me to vote for the Hillary Clinton, and I did everything that Master tells me. I'm a good slave to my master. Uh, he said that he would drag me through the desert by my hair and make me his his wife to be. So I did as he's, he as he's told. Uh, no, what am I talking about? <laughs> Jesus Christ! So I shouldn't get on fucking camera. Uh, fucking i'm not even kidding every voice acting gig that i've ever done for fellow youtubers i always leave in a gag reel and like luckily half of them keep it in but like the shit i say in those are just abominable it's and like so some so only some people have the guts to keep it in or like keep it in as like a, an outtake reel like chris Raygun. if you've ever seen me do oh yeah uh uh paul the llama uh, he always keeps in the fucking outtakes, and it's fucking brilliant. It's like he's such a Chad. I think he just um, he just he's like, yeah, whatever. It's it's extra content. They did put the effort into recording it. They didn't cut it out themselves, so it's free fair like, game, man. Like there's a fucking Amy Schumer joke in there, or some shit, and then uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> and then there's like, I said something about uh, he wanted me to scream for God, and he had different like takes. He's like, "Yeah, you can say Elohim, you can say Yahweh," and I said, "I was like screaming, like help me, Yahweh!" And then I got to Yahweh. I said, "Yahweh sounds like a fucking like mumble, 
mumble rapper name. <laughs> and so then I started like spitting some rhymes and he kept it in. <laughs> I was like, I went on a tangent about how Yahweh sounds like a fucking SoundCloud rapper. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> See, the thing is, I always think he, like, directs for, like, those extra ones. I didn't know it was just, like, just extra bullshit. <laughs> like, it's it's not scripted. He did not ask this of me. None of them do. Um, but <laughs> some of them, some of them are, uh, some of them are dope enough to actually keep that shit in, or at least, uh, as an outtake reel or something. Like, Fucking Chris, I mean, uh, at the time when I became Paul, uh, it was pretty much like Psychic Pebbles, uh, Stamper and me. Yeah. Like the only people, which is fucking insane, by the way, uh, that I would ever be working on even the, like, even a weird gig, like just voicing a stuffed animal in a YouTube video. The fact that I was like voicing the same character shoulder to shoulder with Stamper and fucking Psychic Pebbles, these two people I've been looking up to for like, 10 plus years of my life uh is fucking incredible and they did an amazing job like like amazing like stamper's fucking rant where he basically becomes god was uh was um, like it was, one it of was the funniest a plus. fucking things it was fucking oh. solid yeah when people ask me it's like oh it's like i thought you were like the best paul it's like that it's like it's really nice uh, other than to say that but i'm just, I'm just like dude like objectively it was stamper like <laughs> he like knocked it out of the park and psychic pebble is so disgusting as like paul it's so gross <laughs> i love it oh uh david firth i want to give a big shout out to him in terms of people who influenced me i actually like legitimately that one artist alone has been the product of like the majority of the shit that I've made in my life. David Firth is probably, I think, one of the most talented and intelligent and creative artists on not only the platform, but just in general. It's insane that I can, like, follow this guy and have, like, conversations. Like, we don't DM, but, like, I've chatted with him in, like, replies and stuff. Yeah. Fucking really cool, amazing guy. Uh, like, kind of kind of strange and eccentric, but, like, I love that about him. Yeah. And like even as even as more recent work, does that still influence you today, or is it just mainly oh, just? Oh kinda... my god, yeah. Okay. I, I actually, I, it's crazy enough is that um, like so many people uh know know him for the salad fingers stuff. Uh, that's that's really like his biggest sort of claim to fame yeah. and stuff. But uh, God, I know him for like absolutely everything, and even his like really weird obscure like claymation work that nobody knows of like he's he's dabbled in so many different forms of art and entertainment it's not just flash or or anything and like he has these crazy he had an entire um series called sock and i might be getting this wrong but this was my impression of what this sparked this series hmm. but uh his sock series were his drug-induced dreams that he turned into cartoon shorts and they don't and they, and they and they act just like a sort of drug-induced dream logic sort of thing and it's fucking it's incredible i don't i don't know what it is about them it, because it, it feels so like real it isn't uh just weird for the sake of weird like i feel like i feel like a lot of people have a good nose for weird for the sake of weird like that's i think that's why like david lynch works and then there's like People that you just know an obvious like David Lynch imitation when you see it. Yeah, like there's there's people who who obviously take his style and be like, I can do weird, and it's like, listen, there has to be, there has to be a reason. I, there has to be like that, some type of reason behind yeah. the the weird. Not that there has to be reasoning. It has to be reason. There has to be like a, a logic behind it. It, it doesn't have to be apparent. It doesn't have to be, um, it, it, but it, it's so hard to, to, to quantify and describe, but like um, it needs to be sort of like purposeful or like feel it. Because uh, I feel like uh, David Lynch is what he's really done, um, whether you love, or, love him or hate him, I do feel like he's sort of tapped into this sort of like subconscious way of creating art. Like it, it, it's very like he just... He, like I don't even think he really knows what he's doing. He sort of just lets himself do it in a way. It's like he like the, letting his like unconscious mind make his fucking work. And I get a lot of that from uh, David Firth as well. Like yeah. I I know that ha uh, animation, even if it's Flash, and you can like set things and use like transform tools and stuff like that a lot. That sort of saves time on like hand drawn uh, is great and all, but it's still a very 
painstaking process. And you'd think that 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 sort of subconscious or uh, unconscious way of like creating art would be lost in something so tedious as like fucking animation, but it doesn't seem to be. Um, and and it comes so naturally. Like uh, I, I mean, know, there was, uh... working with Flash is already fucking tedious enough. I, I think. <laughs> oh God. I, I, I attempted back in the day, like back in like 2007, because I wasn't sure if I was going to be making videos or not. Like it was, I think it was like, it was apparent since I was like 11 that I wanted to be like a f filmmaker, but you know, like things don't always turn out. So I dabbled in uh, animation. I picked up uh, flash and I tried, to, I tried it, but oh, it was abysmal. I could, you know, it's crazy. I said, I, I literally told myself, wow, this is too tedious. And then I became a fucking full-time editor. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and like and not even just like oh cut paste and and whatever and add some like effect or like the effects alone are so goddamn tedious and nobody's like telling me to do this no one is like putting a gun to my head and being like yeah make the longest most tedious detailed effect of like mary jane getting her head blown off um <laughs> yeah and, like no, you, uh, yeah, you get it, it, you, you get like that that hook and you're like well i could do this and then like you're sitting there like well, no, let's do this better. And kind of like, if I if I crop this out and kind of motion track this, and this, if, if I do this, and, 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 and like five hours go by and you're like, it's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, uh, and you know what? That's the, that's the fucking thrill of it. That's really what keeps me doing it. For the, the, the selfish, a there's two, a there's two sides of it. There's the, like, what I like to see and give out to the world and see, re like, return, which is usually, like, laughter. And yeah, sure, some monetary value, but like, if uh if i was living comfortable if i was living comfortably i'd still just be doing this for free if i if i won the lottery i would absolutely be okay with turning my patreon off and just having it open to like like if i wanted to, i would only have it open if like i wanted to curate certain things for people but uh i would literally just delete my fucking patreon if i was like living carefree money wise and i would just create this shit just to make people laugh no ads no nothing um because I, I love just, like, like I know it sounds like the archetypal, like, the very stereotypical response that you'll hear a lot of YouTubers say or like that. But I swear to God, I'm, like, being genuine when I say this. But when I get those, like, comments of people saying, shit's really bad for me right now. Uh, like, I, I'm, I'm in a bad place, but I watch your fucking videos and they really cheer me up. And I feel like it's one of the only things that's making me laugh nowadays that is like what is keeping me fucking doing this because i wish i had that when i was that low and there's times where i am that low but I there mean, are other creators that are doing it for me and i feel like i need to add to the the the, the greater good or the zeitgeist or whatever i knew you were gonna say zeitgeist so i heard it i yeah, heard it too <laughs> yeah. yeah it was it was it was it was wanted to come out it was tr it was dancing back there at the back of my throat i, I was sitting like, there and it was like well you said nobody was there for you to do it for you but wouldn't that have been people like Stamper or Oni or Psychic Pebbles? Back oh, in the day? I'm talking. Mu I'm talking much earlier, before like because I'm I'm a fucking old man at this point, and uh, the internet wasn't always there for me. And sure that I had like cartoons and anime and stuff like that, but here, like that's a that's a curated show. It, we're only kind of like within the like last ten to tw ooh, twenty years tops have been getting not no no I wouldn't say twenty years. It's uh, like I'd say I'd fifteen. Say it's, it's, 15, yeah. Uh, 15 years where we've had uh, just people who are artists putting their stuff out there for us to see and in, in indulge in. But we can, like, reach them. We can talk to them. We can get instant sort of feedback. It feels like you're a part of a community. Um, whereas, like, something that's uh, like a show or television or, uh, or cartoons or like that, um, they're fully produced and it's just yes that polish is amazing um but there's it, you're kind of you're sort of like kept at arm's length in terms of getting closer in some sort of way okay uh whereas like and i'm not talking about being like a stan or a, a simp or whatever the fuck like i want to get close to these artists but like in a physical in a physical or like uh like uh talking to them sort of way i mean just like there's a more open form and a more open community now and even just hearing the tiniest bit of acknowledgement from people you looked up to the fact that i would have never thought when i started watching david firth uh i would have never thought that he, i would ever get some sort of uh feedback acknowledgement that like i like from him at all 
until I messaged him on Twitter or I sent him like a little thing commenting on something and he commented back and I just suddenly took I was like taken aback. It was so weird. I was like, why I'm getting like starstruck by a guy who just makes cartoons on the internet. But it's so it's so true. And this guy, one this one person alone, uh, has had such an impact on me. But so is like Stamper, so is like Psychic Pebbles, all these people, like Oni. Um and I think it's really fucking cool that we can sort of like prop each other up and be a little bit kind of closer and sort of help each other because it's obvious that like day and age like youtube and shit like that really shits on its creators but like all we have is each other like artists only really have each other at the end of the day yeah um uh so that that's kind of why when i say that like i wish i had that at a certain point in my life like um, I'm talking about when I was like really young and I didn't even really start to kind of feel like I was a part of the community until like, let's be real. Like I'd say about like five years ago was when I, I was just an outsider until I started really making content Yeah. In, in my eyes. So yeah. Um, it's, it's my idea to kind of put that out there. And I think, sorry, the flip side, the selfish part of it that I need to get back to was, um, the selfish acts aspect is uh, I like the challenge. When I do that sort of like really crazy effect shit, I I love problem solving, and it becomes that I just I just tell myself it's like okay, so you're gonna take a still image of a, a of a woman who just gave fellatio to a man, and she needs a, a line read, but like semen needs to pour out of her mouth. Yeah, and I'm like, how am I gonna do that? Like, realistically, how the fuck am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to call up my friend who doesn't have a beard because I would have done it for myself. Yeah. He's clean shaven. Uh, and I'm going to make him eat ice cream. I'm going to film him reading the line and it pours out of his face. And I'm just going to, like, literally cut out each individual, like, image of his lips in the ice cream pouring out of his mouth. And then just paste it on and then frame by frame connect it just to make a really lewd stupid joke that makes people laugh on the internet and it was just like, yeah. so much work but yeah it feels so like there's so much gratification in that and completing it and making it actually happen i didn't know if i could do it but i set out to that's the that's the fun of it you don't know if you can actually do this shit until you try yeah it's kind of like <laughs> now when, when you did it was there any complication where you were thinking like i guess if i don't get it if i don't have the right material to actually source it i'm just gonna jerry rig something else yeah actually you know that's happened once or twice and crazy and luckily it's only happened once or twice because i'm not gonna lie i like maybe uh like i don't think i have like the worst form of ocd but i do have like it to a mild degree for sure and when shit like that happens and i know that i can't get what i want in terms of like the effect i start to like i i, I kind of like lose it i start to like break down because it's like there was a even a couple i'd say like last month i like literally ran out of money <laughs> because i i had to like pay a subscription to a stock image site and this is like how stupidly into it i am i'm paying money to a stock image site even though people would find it funny if i just stole the images with the watermark and everything but to me i'm like no it needs to be like a clean image and i need to like cut it out into a png myself and it needs to take like four hours it's it's uh i set myself up for failure really so like i got to the end of the month and i went oh fuck I'd used up my last image on this site and I didn't have enough money to pay for another one until the next payday, which was only a couple days away. But like this video had to be done for the end of the month. And it was like, I was faced with a choice. Do I send the video out as is with this one? It's just a fucking stock image. It's literally just a stock image of a couple like piggybacking on each other and like laughing in front of a house. Yeah. And I couldn't find one that fit apart from this one I had to pay for. And I was just like, no. I literally, like, broke down during the stream. Well, I wasn't, like, tearing up, but I, was, I just, like, stopped everything. I just, like, lost all motivation. I said, like, no, it has to be this or, or like, this video isn't happening. Over, like, a fucking stock image not being right. And there have been times where I have sent it out where I felt like it wasn't 100%. And it, like, it's, it's oddly, like, gut-wrenching because I know that you can't, like take it back there was a i did something i did a george lucas one time where i i uploaded a video and i didn't like it and it didn't have the initial boom that i thought it was gonna get 
So I literally removed it, re-edited it, and then put it back up. But like the damage had been done. Like half those people had already seen the video, and now this is a slightly different version. So like nobody wanted to see that version. So it was worse the second time around. So in my mind, it's like you you get it right the first time, or else you don't. It's it's scrapped essentially. Yeah. Was that a recent one? Um. No, that was. Uh, oh god, that was years ago. I think that's why it's like instilled this weird like sort of like insecurity in me. Like that was. Uh, uh, 2012, maybe 13, and this is just when I was doing my own like personal like channel stuff. Uh, I I made some like mock video of Pacific Rim. It was coming out in theaters, yeah. And I did this stupid thing. It was like, well, I can't show you any footage. It's like I want to talk about how much I love the movie, but I can't show you any footage because of like I'm gonna get dinged with copyright. So I'll just kind of like reenact it, and I just took like a Gundam toy and like a dinosaur toy and just smash them together to like really epic like dubstep and like so this is obviously years ago so it sounds like horribly dated but like at the time it would have been like kind of like funny and relevant depending on execution and, you could probably still do it today yeah I, I still look back at it and chuckle I think it's just like that that dubstep was aggressive I think it's because the trailer to uh Pacific Rim had dubstep in it and I was like oh ugh. Even at the time, and this is at the height of dubstep, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's like, it doesn't feel right. It's like, <laughs> this wasn't Guillermo del Toro's decision to put dubstep in the fucking trailer. It was I a think. fucking trailer house decision. You know yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, get some fucking script, get some bangerang in there. It's like, <laughs> I was like, oh. So that's, that's what I was doing. It's kind of, in fact, actually, technically at the time, I didn't see the movie. So I was literally going based off that trailer. So it was a fake review of uh, Pacific Rim. Good. And yeah, they, why would I ever review something for real? Why would I ever take anything seriously? Um, and then uh, says the guy who makes a 47 minute donkey video. Um, <laughs> oh, come um, on. It was oh, <laughs> Uh oh. Um, uh but yeah i upload yeah again i just i just i didn't feel like it was right the first time i re-uploaded it and then one of my friends reached out to me and they're like i think the first version was better and i just fucking like i had like an existential crisis over like a stupid youtube video they probably only got like three thousand views tops yeah um it like not even it, it so I don't know. I I kind of do it to myself. I, I I don't know if it's learned or if it's if it's nature or nurture, but I I fucking get like that. And it, it's a common theme with a lot of people in, in the artist community. They just like treat themselves like absolute dirt sometimes and hold themselves to like absolutely unreasonable expectations. Yeah, I mean you're you're always so, gonna be your own harshest critic. So <laughs> yeah, it just yeah, it's that actually you you. <laughs> I'm actually really surprised you went through my list of my questions, like because <laughs> I didn't think you'd actually put on your own pull up uh, editing as art um, on there. So I, I thought I was gonna ask like have to ask you what editors that you like and everything like that. But um, oh, editors, yeah. Well, editors are uh, fucking fakes. They're frauds. <laughs> They're little, little. Okay. Oh, uh, wow. I slid this <laughs> clip over and I cut it down to length. Wow, editor, big boy. <laughs> Oh, credit the editor. Yeah, what do they do to earn that? <laughs> Nobody, Nobody's going to be on the fucking poster go, yeah, I, I know who directed it, but who edited it? Uh, that's what I uh, want to know. <laughs> actually, no, actually, like, legitimately, like, uh, like all joking aside, like, editors really do, they're, they're the silent fucking heroes. Like, nobody gives a shit about the editor unless they're doing a bad job and then they get shit on. It's kind of like so, special and, effects. I, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, it's uh the... Well, yeah, yeah um, I would say fucking special effects get more praise than than not too, because then sometimes like a so like a, it all it takes is a movie with bad special effects that come out, and then somebody to go, wow, the special effects in Jurassic Park were amazing. Like credit to them, they did an amazing job. It's like well, nobody talks about like the editor for like Jurassic Park. It it it's um. And, you know, I get it, uh, but, like, the thing is about editors is, like, that's what, that's the way the world works, and that's, like, how we should be happy. No editor should ever be like, well, why am I not in the spotlight? Because that's kind of our job, is we're supposed to be as hidden as possible. In fact, the more somebody ignores an editor, really, is kind of, like, the bigger compliment. If you don't even notice the editing in a film, you've done your job. 
I like uh again even i'm a victim of this where i just or or, or uh, i'm sorry i'm guilty of this where i watch a where i watch a movie and i'm really only noticing the editing in two scenarios and that's if the editing is shit or if the editing it was like very precise and it's usually like stylistic editing it's like scott pilgrim or it's like a horror film and it knows exactly when the cut or something there's like, like there's horror- cut by numbers and then they're stylistic those are the yeah. ones that you really and, notice yeah and and that's and that's kind of kind of it and i mean i mean and like the editing that i do is like really different because it's like effects heavy like technically like like what i'm doing is like both effects and uh editing like there's no like i don't know is that what an editor does i don't know how it works i mean like i give my stuff uh, like i've even had like tom tom 5000 he's done the editing on my channel yeah. he's done a great job um but he even he does the effects and stuff like that but like I, i'm just wondering like does effects even if you're an editor those like effects and stuff like that is that technically editing or is that going to the realm of effects I think I think it when it comes into the realm of effects is when like a team has to do it, and then like yeah. kind of editing that YouTubers or streamers or compilation editors have to use. Those ones go like it, it's definitely mostly editing, but it's yeah. also like you're grabbing some effects, and like like um, Tim and Eric, Tim and yeah. Eric are editors, but I wouldn't really call them special effects. They do do it. But I wouldn't call it, like, because it's, for the most part, from what I understood, it was they did the editing and the effects to actually match the editing like they did it. Yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that's, a, that's a good point. And actually, like, that's one of the reasons, like, I fell in love with them. In fact, I would say that Tim and Eric were a huge inspiration for my editing style and sort of a lot of the jokes that I make. Um, and sort of, like, the the pacing. I think uh, I can see it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, like, that, that I mean, they just had such a fucking huge impact on, like, that generation of, like, um, everybody wanted to be, like, some sort of form of, like, Tim and Eric. I mean, that Pacific Rim video I was talking about, like, years ago, that was me attempting to be, like, a Dr. Steve Brule sort of-esque character. Yeah. Standing awkwardly in front of the camera with a mic, and, like, the mic is absolutely abysmal, and I'm talking way too close into it. And, like, <laughs> just, like, somebody who has no technical expertise and no talent, no nothing. And is, they're trying to make a YouTube video. And, like, that's the joke. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's not far from the truth. Fuck it, Al. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, I'd say, actually, like, speaking of comedy, like, I'd say Tim and Eric and Mel Brooks biggest influences and does it act Alphanakis although they're in like the circle of like Tim and Eric sort of friends and people and stuff like that but like those are the biggest inf- inspirations for me in terms of like um comedic uh, well, like what I want to do comedy wise that's um, I, like I could see the other ones but Zach Galifianakis comes out of nowhere a little bit oh yeah he's but he, he's just so he's just so odd and I love his fucking dry weird delivery and stuff yeah. um god there's a fucking skit it's just hilarious it's the stupidest fucking thing in the world but it makes me laugh so hard he's sitting in a lawn chair and he's doing an interview outside and he's he's got his he's got his chair and he's kind of it's like there's like it's fall uh there's leaves all over the ground or like that and he's kind of like outside of some sort of like manner and everything and they got him it's like a very atypical sort of like uh like interview shot where they got him in front of his house and stuff like that in the backyard they're having a very intimate conversation he's talking about like he's talking about uh like humor and he's talking about like he's really talking about uh, like about like how highbrow it is and how like you have to be very clever to be a community and he's going off for like that and then he's kind of he's kind of his chair is like situated at the top of a bit of a hill and then he's like, and he, and then he starts talking about like, yeah, like I was never a fan of like Three Stooges and Pratt Falls. It's very, it's very like idiot humor. And all of a sudden, one of the legs just snaps on his chair, and he goes tumbling down the hill, and he's like screaming, and <laughs> and 
And it's like, and I'm laughing. It's like he just talked about like how shitty Pratt Falls are. And it's clearly there's a string attached and it's a broken chair leg. It's so obviously set up. Yeah. And he like, he falls down, but like it doesn't end there. He gets back to the top of the hill, sets it back up, and then keeps talking about highbrow humor and they snap it again. He goes falling down again and they just keep doing it. And they keep the interview going, but he just keeps falling and taking these like intermissions where he falls down a hill <laughs> and then he tries to act like nothing wrong has happened and he just continues it's like the funniest thing i've ever fucking seen and i like that i even like the message behind it it's that nothing you know like even goofy humor is valid even stupid like like fucking the majority of my jokes aren't clever let's be real i'm not a smart man like the majority of my stuff is like meme it is edgy and it is like fucking puns and low lowest of the low brow humor but and there's there's timing it, and editing and everything like that that's the that's the thing i've, I've seen other people do like they like their whole shtick not to shit on anybody and i'm not gonna name names i'm not gonna be like that but like i've seen other youtubers and they do like low brow easiest kind of humor um but their delivery and shit is just completely off and it also doesn't seem like it's coming from like an, uh, like a place where it's really like genuine it, it it really it's like it's like it literally is poo poo humor just just poo poo baby fart humor and that's it and there doesn't even seem to be any sort of charm i i think that people get i like my audience because they seem to sort of get that like i know my joke is bad and you can just hear the wink every time i make one of those shitty jokes and i'm glad people have picked up on that yeah do you think do you think that your delivery and kind of like how your your comedic timing has actually been i want to say strained under like streaming circumstances oh sorry could you sorry could you just repeat that last part oh no no, no. You, like really your bad. with your comedic timing and delivery and everything do you think it's like been like strained or changed or kind of like morphed over oh. time with like streaming circumstances and stuff Oh, it's streaming because it's, like, in real time? Yeah, and you're doing it for, like, hours at a time. Trying to entertain oh, off the cuff for hours at a time feels like you might be... Oh, uh, I mean, no. I, no, because uh, when I'm recording for a video, it's nothing scripted. It's all basically, like, unscripted um, uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000, essentially, for video games. Well, like, the first two seasons, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um and that also a huge inspiration as well. Um And that's sort of it. It's just like uh sure, I think my material would be way better if I played through the game. Maybe a play did a silent playthrough and then literally recorded my voice later and like was able to like curate the jokes, have like get get writing involved, maybe even have a team of writers, get like somebody else paid and involved. It's like that's workshop it. I'm sure I could come up with like the funniest gaming channel ever it would it would be like fucking um team four stars uh dragon ball series in terms of like uh just just like comedic delivery and and like ah it would have been it would have been amazing i'm sure no no not really but um i just like doing it off the cuff and every single time i record for these videos it is completely off the cuff there's nothing preemptive except for like maybe i'll have an idea of what this game is like and that's what will prompt me to play it and it's like oh i can definitely make this joke like i played gal gun because i knew it was going to be smut yeah and there's like the jokes just make themselves it, it was like scal gun is a very easy but bet in terms of like ripping into something but then like i don't know i played plague tale and that ended up being like surprisingly having like a lot of jokes in it or spider-man i i didn't know there was going to be so many jokes and so much so many memes in my spider-man playthrough but that's just like how it went and this is me going for hours on end recording so when even when it comes to like live streaming my face is up on screen and everything too um it sort of comes naturally i mean i get drained i physically like i physically and mentally get tired but yeah. uh that's that's about it it's like i just i just need to to stop eventually and i do get kind of tired there's 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 times where i had to like stop because like the the energy level or the mojo just isn't there yeah I I, to, like, i've seen it happen rest. and everything i wanted to yeah. go back to editing uh because uh kind of got off track a little bit but um i guess what um what would have been 
I get okay. Let me rephrase this. Let me try to put it out there so I'm not like a, <laughs> okay. a big, massive, bumbling uh, tardo. Uh, <laughs> did you actually take at any point uh, commissions for editing? Oh, did I edit for other people? Yes. Yeah, plenty, uh, a few times. Okay. Uh, I was about to say plenty of times, so then I thought of it, it's like, no, actually, it's been pretty scarce, actually. Um, but, yes. Okay. Um, Did... Oh, go on. Oh, did you... Did oh, you no, I, I thought you were about to again. say something. That was my bad. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, go, go ahead. It sounded like you were about to ask if I've commissioned for specific somebodies. Well, no, I wasn't going to ask if you were going to specific commission for specific oh. somebodies. You seem like you don't want to do names very often, and I, I would... Not with this question. I was going to say, has there ever been uh, somebody you've just absolutely despised uh editing for oh oh god okay yeah maybe i should uh keep quiet then um i'm, I'm like saying like that it was like just painstaking like i've had a few edits myself where uh somebody wanted me to get like five videos on actually, an hour and a half fortnite gameplay and like oh god his friends were funnier <laughs> than he was and it was fucking yeah. obnoxious <laughs> Oh God, no! Yes, actually, um, uh, I guess uh, especially ever since I commissioned uh Tom, he's like I I don't I don't always have work for him and stuff like that. Sometimes I I literally just don't have the money or or, or whatever. Like I'm I'm still don't really make all that much as a YouTuber. So like I I get him when I can, but he'll come back. So he's like, obviously he goes off to the world. I I really hope that I've helped helped him in some way to get more work because he, he seems to be getting it, which is really good. Yeah. Um. But he'll come to me, and I won't name names, but he'll come to me even and, like, show me some of the stuff that he's working on. And he'll just be like, it, he'll just say, ugh, and then, like, send me a message. And it's a clip from, like, the video he's working on. And it's, like, Minecraft roleplay oh. or some shit. And, uh, and I just, I feel for him. I feel for him. It's just abysmal. And also, like, I've done it too. One, I think one of the worst things, because somebody saw that I did, like, YouTube gaming stuff. And they wanted, like, my editing style. Or, okay, they didn't... No, they didn't want my editing style. They actually didn't want my style at all. They actually... Because they... Like, this, this is a nightmare client. Okay. They, they, they turned into... And again, I'm not going to mention who this is. But they wanted... They asked for me specifically because of my previous work. But then they proceeded to say, well, I want it like this. And it has to be in this sort of style. And I want it to be really energetic and like this and blah, blah, blah. And they said... All of a sudden, they started, like really limiting what i could do and then i realized oh i'm basically becoming like a ghost editor for this video like it's not about me even if my name is on it it's not my style it's their style they just want somebody else to do it yeah and the, i think the worst part about that video is even just that alone because sometimes you you just have to do a different style or something that's outside of your comfort zone or you got to do things that like as an editor where the editor is you are uh, doing shit for other people it's somebody else's vision unless you're working on it in full by yourself so you have to bend yourself to other people a lot to sort of like like make their vision succeed yeah um but so that makes sense it was annoying yes but you know what the most egregious thing is it's something you wouldn't expect but they wanted me to do pop-up text for everyone's speech oh and and it's, I gotta, I, can I, can I, like, if, if, if this reaches anybody, can I just say that if, 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 if you're just not funny, <laughs> if you need pop-up text, I'm so sorry. I, I get how it works. <laughs> I do it for myself even sometimes. Sometimes it's because, like, you don't hear me properly or it is to emphasize something. But if your entire video... I'm so sorry. Like this is probably this. I can I can name people. a few this applies to of people with over a mil, but <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's uh, I, I like, I I like it may, okay maybe you are funny, but it almost looks like a sense like to me like people who have worked on videos like this or like even as an outsider like just a viewer, it to me it comes across as unless you have to use text 
And it's like, and I mean, it's like animated. It's like popping at the screen and stuff like that. And that's okay, like every once in a while. Like I, I did in my last video to emphasize like how I felt in a moment. But when, when it's literally everyone's dialogue, including the host and whatever guests or anything, oh, and you have to all the dialogue. It. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I had to separate it and color code it. And sometimes they wanted different fonts, even to show that it was a different person speaking. Um. Like, that is an admission of, like, I don't think I'm that funny, and I need, like, animated, like, text to help emphasize the joke. I'm saying that because I want people to stop doing it, because it's so much extra effort that shouldn't be there. It's so unnecessary. Have it in spurts, when it's, like, a really big moment, and it's just people screaming in the mic, like, so, I don't know, something amazing happened, and everyone's just screeching, Sure, have that fucking giant, ah, uh, come across, like, a train across the screen. Have the fucking, like, text that keeps getting larger and larger. Like, that, like, literally just, la like, the text is just ha-ha, but it gets larger and la larger with each, like, squeal. Shit like that. G go ham. Sparingly. Don't do it for the whole goddamn video. It's so fucking annoying for us editors, and it's... I think it sucks as a viewer, too. I look at all the effort and go, wow, that's commendable, but I think it's bullshit, too. <laughs> I, I fucking hate it. After a while, I, I think I, like, I, th I, I thought about actually putting that shit in my theme stuff because, like, there were points where it was like, uh, maybe I should, maybe I should put text up, you know, annotate it all. And I, I sat there and I went, I need a transcript and someone else to time yeah. this. And I don't want to do it. <laughs> It, it, it's it, yeah you know it's it's too much work it, it like um unless you're actually just straight up doing subtitles to help like the hearing impaired uh then sh like, sure that's the only fucking time it should be a thing it's like um i, I guess you could i guess i guess you could justify if you straight up said the text is there and that style to help the hearing impaired and like no no so that it can literally reach all audiences apart from like those that can't see yeah um uh, it, so it's there for all audiences, even though it's all this extra effort or like that. It's not about making the joke funnier. It's kind of it's kind of the best of both worlds. I feel like that's the only time that shit could be justified is that if they just said yes, it's for the hearing impaired, and that way everyone can watch my videos. Uh, but but I gotta admit, it's it's a ton of fucking effort, and it is commendable, but only really commendable to the editor themselves and commendable that if they're going the extra mile and being like oh we're trying to be inclusive um still i feel like very unnecessary because <laughs> i think a transcript could just fix all that <laughs> yeah just it doesn't have that. to be animated and hard-coded into the video <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, what a nightmare i've had to do it in the past and i just i straight up i finished a project but i literally told them I'm done. <laughs> I said, like, that's my first and only video for you. I'm so sorry. I took my money and I ran. Did that, Did it pay well? What's that? Did it pay well? Yes. Okay. I'll give them that. Um, and I, again, I'm not saying who it is. They paid very handsomely, but I, uh, the pain definitely outweighs the, the pay. Okay. Or, or, yeah. It's just, I can't. I don't even care if I was. That's the thing at the end of the day. If 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 this if this YouTube shit was paying me handsomely, very like incredibly well. Like I was making, I'm, I'm fucking Wolf of Wall Street. I'm making so much money. I don't even know what to fucking do with them. <laughs> ordering exotic animals to my home. Just 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 like uh, there's a harem of women. I don't even have a bed. It's just a it's just a mass of flesh that I sleep on. I have so many <laughs> fucking women at my disposal. Uh, I, I just purchased them like, like, by the know. lot. <laughs> like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, like bulk, whatever. Okay, you I'm pick done. up a set um, at Sam's Club, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I picked up a, I have a large pack, <laughs> like I, a apocalypse pack full of harem bitches, um, and like that'd be great but at the end of the day if i was editing if what was required out of me to get the, this wealth and power was to edit videos like that wouldn't do it <laughs> i wouldn't do it uh, it's sometimes it's it's uh you gotta draw the line for your sanity and, and um, not to mention you gotta draw some time for that that uh apocalypse harem pack you know
It's true. I mean, there's just so many holes, and like <laughs> they all need love. You don't you, like the last thing you want is somebody getting neglected in neglected in your little harem. They start they start feeling bad. They start going crazy. <laughs> They haven't gotten enough pee pee juice in a while. Those women go crazy when they don't get pee pee juice on time. Let's be real. You know, the river starts to run red. I'm not sure what that's about, but you know. <laughs> uh oh, she broke in. Time to throw her out. Wow, these things are only good for a month. <laughs> Off to the streets with you. Uh, <laughs> women, am I right? Okay. I'm am right. I right, guys? <laughs> am I right, incels? Okay. It's- <laughs> I, I wanted, um, I guess on another note, would you ever take, do, would you ever, and do you still take editing jobs now? Um, I'll, I'm open to it. Uh, I don't take them as often. I don't really, I like, uh, I don't even advertise that I do, but if somebody's willing to ask me, I will consider it. Um, yeah. And it, I think, uh, I only, I only do it based on pay. Like, uh, I, um, I think that's it. Like, I won't even say what, like, my asking price is. If you're curious, contact me and we'll talk it out. But I, I, I hate to admit it, but I do I probably charge a little bit higher than the next guy only because my time is incredibly precious these days, unfortunately. And- that's sort of, like, the situation I put myself in. Uh, well, actually, no, that might change because of the coronavirus. Sorry. Actually, hire me because I'm, star- I'm dying. Do you want to edit your Fortnite gameplays and your Fortnite role plays? <laughs> oh my god! Oh fucking Christ! I, I, no, I you know what. Oh my god! I could be starving, and then all of a sudden, like somebody just asked me. It's like it's like I oh, know I'm, I'm I'll pay you a grand right now. You can have all the groceries you want, Mark. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm starving. I'm starving. <laughs> oh, I need I need fresh fruit. I need my mineral. I need my mineral water. <laughs> I need my mineral water. <laughs> um, and then I'll be like, yeah, just um. Fortnite roleplay. And I I don't know. I just like I take my little survivor bullet, put it in my gun my survivor gun, and I put put that dang thing in my mouth, bro boy, and I'd fucking pull the trigger. Well I thought you'd so just take out not... a rib and maybe stab your heart with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> take out the most gruesome way. <laughs> yeah. Uh slow and painful. I, I, I wanna savor the moment. I want everyone to know the way I horribly killed myself rather than bend to the the will of Fortnite Let's Players. <laughs> um, fucking Christ. I, uh, I mean, <laughs> it kind of panned out for me because, like, his friends were funnier than he was, and so they spent the whole oh, time ripping great. on him. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? It's There's, the like, best. the guy who... Tr- the guy who tries to be funny, and it turns out all his friends are literally just fucking lads, and they're just ripping into him, and it's like, you fucking idiot. Oh, it's fucking the best. I, I got to, to have all the footage, and I just made fun of him for, like, four fucking straight videos, a whole hour of fucking Fortnite footage, and I just made fun of him the whole time. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, oh, you know, you know what's even better is um, when they ask you to cut that shit out. They're like... It's like, oh, like, there's this there's this part where, like, my friend starts ripping into me about having a small pee-pee. Can you just, like, take that part out? <laughs> they rip like, into him so much, and they're like, edit that out, edit that out. And I'm like, nah, I'm leaving that in. It's funny to me. It's, like, it's funny it's like, to wait, me wait, that wait, they wait, left wait, it in. But, and they but loved boss, it. He, he, oh, he oh, genuinely good. loved it. Uh, it just, just tell him, it's like, but boss, you told me they kept the funny bits in. It's like, there's no more funny bits. <laughs> I'm out. I'm all, I'm all dry on the funny bits. He, like, w- which do you want, boss? <laughs> He's just like. Mmm. It's it's really weird because I feel like he tries to be like very self aware about his like cringe level, but like he is so <laughs> bad. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. I guess we already answered that through um through conversation and everything. You talking about editing. Do you think editing is underappreciated or just misunderstood? Oh, okay. Ooh, that, that's a good question. That's a really good question, actually. Um, damn. I think that... Well, okay, we're talking uh, at least in terms of YouTube. Um, I think that good editing does not go unnoticed. Okay. Uh, I think that if a video is very well edited people really do notice i get it i get compliments all the time i see other youtubers if your shit is actually polished 
people do seem to actually tend to pick up on that you did a good job like and i'm not talking straight editing sometimes it really is like we're talking effects and stuff it's usually the like added effort and the added time and even money like the fact that i'm like i'm 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 paying like uh fuck what do i pay it's like a i think it's a 50 dollar a month subscription fee just to get those fucking stock images to make pngs out of them um i think that people notice like just just the sheer fact that you have all these stock images and they don't have watermarks on them or like that that's the cleaner polish that veneer people do seem to kind of pick up on it and it's i think it's because there is this understanding that like these are just people out of their basements or out of their apartments or whatever that are doing this shit by themselves and when it's good it's really good it's very commendable because like fuck you did this on your own most likely um shit it does go i think that it's i think that it's misunderstood though I don't think that people understand the amount of effort. Even when people say, wow, good job, that would look like it was a lot of effort. I still don't think that they understand the deep well of 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 shit that was put into it. I really don't think that people understand quite the level and depth of uh, production or pre-production and post-production that goes into, into these works. Um... I mean, Christ, like, just, just, I would, actually, I would love to do a breakdown of what it takes just to make one of my videos, and let's be, let's be real, like, is, is, mu is, like, heavily po polished and effects heavy as some of my videos can be, at the end of the day, it's still nothing in comparison to some other YouTubers' stuff, like, other YouTubers blow me out of the water in terms of editing and polish, and even upload rate, it's crazy, like, they, they do better, more polished work than me, faster, it's it's incredible, but I would love to like show the full process because I don't think people really do understand what it takes. Like I do those like speed editing videos, but that is just scratch again. That's just scratching the surface. That is an editing session. That's not even me editing the full video in length. That's not me. It's it's say, one portion. It's it's just a fucking snippet. It really is the tip of the iceberg. Um, so I do think that it's heavily misunderstood and when I, especially as a youtuber when you tell people out in the real world that you're a youtuber and even if you describe to them you're an editor even if it's for other people even if it's for another youtube channel people always go oh huh. like, yeah all right it's like oh it's like oh so you sit around all day like oh so you like so wait you're on your like computer all day you watch YouTube it, videos? You, 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 you scream so your at a job camera? Is like watching YouTube videos and like just cutting every once in a while? It's like, no, no, no. See, um, this guy wants me to make like a 13 or like a 12 minute video out of like seven hours worth of footage of him and his friend fucking around. It's like, it's like that alone. I actually fucking hate the cutting down process of like editing. To get a video started initially is the, the hardest part taking it in that first step because like, you have to sift through so much shit and dead air and bad jokes and things that didn't work. And then you have to, like, constantly consider about whether or not you want to keep this, like, pivotal story moment in the game. And this is just my videos alone. This isn't even, like, other people's styles. It's just mine. Um, you got to consider whether or not you have to keep, like, story elements in the video and keep those relevant. I, I do, like, something like an average of three to four sweeps on just trimming my videos alone and like that doesn't mean like and that's not even like if it was long it doesn't matter the length it's gonna be something like three or four sweeps each time first is like keep everything you that seems like it might be relevant or funny then it's okay now we need to narrow the focus and i just narrow the focus three times over <laughs> and then i have something that could be considered a video but guess what i guarantee 100 percent there's like a fifth sweep or, like, if it's the third, then it's the fourth. Um, there's one last sweep, but that comes near to the end of it. And that's, the video's pretty much finished. And then it goes, it comes down to, okay, I like all this, but what can I cut out? Yeah. Like, it, it, you get to, like, the Sophie's choice of it. You need, you need to get into, like, the killing your darlings part of it. And, then, like, the entire process is killing your darlings. If you like a lot of the jokes, some just really need to go. Yeah. Um, there, there are jokes where, I, there's, there's effects that I've worked on full-blown effects that i finished and i looked at it and i went oops that's not funny enough and i just deleted it and it took me fucking like five hours to get a 10 second little clip 
And I thought it was funny when I started it. And then I look at it and I go, hmm, oh no, I've made a horrible mistake and I have to get rid of it. Five hours literally down the drain of my life that I'll never get back. Um, so I don't, I think that it's incredibly misunderstood. Okay. I think that people do appreciate it, but like people really do not get the ins and outs unless they are one themselves. That's why I relate to other editors so much because we, we get it. <laughs> We get it. And then that that was in the frame of like YouTube, but what about like grander films and kind of like short films and everything like that? Uh, it's almost I hate to say it, and fuck, maybe this is uh, me being incredibly ignorant, but um, I feel like it's almost like the opposite in a way. Um, it's just more misunderstood than it is underappreciated. Uh, it's not as appreciated unless misunderstood um okay. i think that like the editing that's required for a lot of movies is literally just again it's just kind of like putting the pieces together and a lot of the times editors really have a strict script on what to do and where to play something and the, the, the they have they have they have breath going down their neck yeah yeah they, they got the director and the producer breathing down their neck and they're being shown storyboards and it's like do it like this essentially there's no real freedom as an editor um it's it's pretty by the numbers but like i mean there are st- there are standout editors in the industry and for a reason that they just sometimes they make executive decisions that are better than what anyone envisioned and sometimes they pull something like there are there are films that have literally been saved in the editing room like the famous uh the, the classic tale of like the original star wars a new hope yeah was saved in the editing room apparently the movie was a fucking dismal and it took the uh george lucas's wife who was editing it to fix it and just cut out all this bullshit with like uh luke on the planet hanging out with his friends and getting drinks and like looking up in the sky and seeing a star battle and him going like whoa that's weird and like it's just like so much wasted time and it got fixed in the editing room um uh, then also sometimes it can be fucking ruined with like uh new additions or like that like uh, ruined or made better like uh apocalypse now was made like worse with uh its newest edition um blade runner was made better with its newer editions you can argue whether or not like the final cut is best or if the cut before that is better but like at least it's one of them and there's you can like watch either six or. versions of six cuts of fucking blade runner and, and this and let's be real the first four are bad yeah <laughs> the first four are bad and the last two are, are like acceptable yeah it's uh so um I think that, but, but I think that like they just get looked past so much. Um, so I think that they're underappreciated. But what there is required of them is pretty well understood by the industry and the mainstream and the audiences, like what their their jobs entail. And it usually means by the numbers. Whereas, like I think as a YouTuber, you have all the freedom in the world, especially if it's your project. Where um, and a lot of people that commission you and ask for your help. Not everybody is like that nightmare client that I described. They don't actually give you all these strict rules. And I've even ghost edited for people. There I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. There are people on YouTube, and all I'll say is like they're pretty big, and I've edited for them, and my name isn't on it, and you'll never know that I edited for them because that was the intention. I literally ghost edited one of their their videos, and my intention was to make it look like all the rest of their videos. I tried to hide my style and my personality in it as much as possible, and that was the point. That's what they paid you I, for, I, or that's what you wanted to do? Um, well, we agreed upon that. Okay. Uh, they came to me because they knew that I was good, and they asked me, it's like, can you... Well, actually, no, so it really was kind of something that was sort of told to me, but I, you know, I could have said no. I could We could have, like, delegated or something like that, but they straight up said, like... I want you to basically just make one of my videos, but I just don't have the time and I need somebody who's going to be in my corner to help me with this upload rate because I just can't do it myself at this point. I need like somebody extra. And it's like, it, it literally just said, can you em- emulate my style? Can you just make one of my videos? And I and I did. And I think I did a pretty good job. Um, and I, I think, that, and like, that's a craft in and of itself. Editing in other people's styles, like literally making something that's unrecognizable. It's like, uh, I don't know. Uh, like, um, I'm trying to imagine, like, what what YouTubers have like 
been doing it themselves for years and then one day they commission somebody and then like nobody really can tell like that's that's commendable that somebody can just pick up and adopt somebody else's style on the on the fly that's a really that's a good editor really yeah not to suck my own dick I, in fact i thought that i did an okay job like um it's something that i don't want to do forever uh because I'm because I'm, I'm an egotistical bastard who likes my name on it everything. No, I was kidding. But uh, it it's uh, um, I I just sort of uh, where where fuck? Oh my god! I blanked. I literally blanked. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I actually don't know where it's going with that. That's it. No, <laughs> no, I get it. Because <laughs> you want your name on it, and you want to be big enough that you don't have to ghost edit and that would probably be most viable for most people right yeah 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 i just i yeah, get it just... but speaking of which i i did catch the stream where i did ask you about the interview you did say that you there was a job opening for corridor digital but you missed the up the the uh submission yeah date. i missed I missed the submission date. I hate to say this, but it part of it was um, I put I was even putting all my like personal projects aside to try and get that done, but um, I think I just I I think I I hate to say this, but I think I've been bogged down with like the current crisis and stuff, and it's actually been even though I'm stuck inside, it's been hard to like edit and stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just like the general miasma of like living in a city that's on lockdown is like kind of shitty i get um, it i i just yeah so i missed the due date unfortunately so i would i would have loved for that to have happened because i fucking love those guys and i would love to have like emulated their style and again ghost edit for them as well well that's but, the thing uh, that i wanted to actually yeah. into not that you should have to ghost edit but who would you want to edit for oh well who would i want to edit for definitely corridor um I don't know other YouTubers. I guess PewDiePie. Okay. Um, because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Sive Morton. He's one of the better editors on on YouTube. Uh, I really love his style. He's actually somebody that I can't even look up to. Um, so, like, like yeah, like uh, Brad, Sive uh, uh, Morton, um, uh, FNAF, Th or, 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 uh, or no, uh, t t oh, fuck, I got to pronounce his name wrong. Um, Matt Pat, that one. <laughs> Matt, I love I love Matt Pat. He's my favorite editor. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'd love to edit for him. Oh my god, and be on a Suicide Watch list. Okay, I'm done. Uh, actually, wait. Uh, that's oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's uh, that's a wait. Hold on. Where was I? Oh yeah, uh, making horrible, horrible, offensive uh, jokes in the wake of a tragedy. Um, yeah. No, <laughs> it's uh. I, sorry, I guess to clarify what I said, I I I. I I personally, and I'm very vocal about this. I do not like Matt Pat, <laughs> and uh, what? I I thought you guys would be best friends. <laughs> I do not like Matt Pat, and I I like I am in no way saying that like what happened to one of his editors was directly his fault. Like it was probably that he just had depression or like that. And I'm not saying that. I just think that like uh. He, I just don't. I just don't like Matt Pat. <laughs> I don't like the way he like treats situations. Like he fucking capitalizes on tra like actual tragedies and stuff. And it's just like, um, I don't like his business practices. And yes. it's kind of sus that like one of like the people working for him like completely lost it. That's horrible. Yeah, it's not. There, there's a there's a whole lot of underlying for that, but there's it's not it's really sad i didn't like i didn't like him before and then that shit happened and it just kind of went like i i like i'm almost not surprised in some fucking way yeah it's it's not that it was a cause but holy shit <laughs> yeah yeah that's that that's another thing i think actually is people don't understand like the sort of uh the fucking workload and the stress that's put on the shoulders of editors too like they're like if um re regardless of whether or not they're the original content creator of the work itself like there is a the, the heftiest part of the job is being put on their shoulders uh to like 
put together and curate the video itself and like all the funny and all of like the the best parts about it that makes it entertaining basically comes from that editor there's so much weight on their shoulders especially when you have to do with like deal with deadlines in fact i i know that this is like the safe route of like blaming the system like a very vague nebulous sort of thing but like i do think that a lot of the fault does kind of lie with youtube and sort of the work environment that it's created in the sense that the algorithm is just geared towards get shit out faster it's um it's the it's the idea of like yes it's the workload it's the algorithm it's the culture it's a culmination of it all mm -hmm. as as well well, as let's be real and and kind of fair not that it's their fault but the people who are way way up on top are also able, able to put out quality content at very high rates, putting a lot of pressure on people yeah. in lower areas. Yeah, it's it's becoming harder and harder to become a YouTuber, and it's becoming harder and harder if you're already kind of started out, but you're on the lower end subscriber-wise or influence-wise, whatever you want to call it. The gap's um, widening. Yeah, the, the gap is widening and it's getting wider and wider. Every time there's a fucking YouTube update, every time they say they've changed something, it's made it worse for smaller creators. And I can't even... No, it, it certainly hasn't made things better for larger creators. But uh, it, 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 that's, let's be real. Like, the, the, the mass amount of people or the smaller creators are the ones that are getting hurt the most. Yes. Yeah. Would you call? Uh, would you consider yourself on the smaller end or on the larger end? Not largest, but you know, like middle tier. Uh, definitely not. I don't think that. Like, I'm not gonna lie. In this day and age, uh, thirty thousand doesn't mean shit. Uh, I think you have to break like a hundred thousand to be even considered in a lot of senses. Like, there are some really good YouTubers that I'm watching that have the same amount of subscribers as I do, maybe slightly more. They haven't passed that like a hundred thousands like threshold yet but um yeah for the most part like i think i think i'm not even kidding like when i say that like yeah you're a youtuber but you're not really shit until you've passed that like a hundred thousand sub mark yeah and or, or you're getting are you becoming sellout king you know <laughs> yeah oh I, or like yeah yeah um <laughs> um and like it's actually it's kind of unfortunate too because like I was getting some really good growth on my channel, uh, although some of it was a little bit too fast. That's that's what fucked me up. Uh, <laughs> if that makes any sense, I was actually nervous about growing too fast. Like it was like a year. You didn't want to lose yourself. Ago. Yeah, I didn't want to lose myself. I didn't want to lose my audience as well. I didn't want them to get buried in amongst a bunch of newbies that like didn't know what the fuck is going on and were just spouting like the same meme shit over and over again. I didn't want to become like jaded like. Okay, like, uh, like Oni doesn't not like his audience, but there's a massive amount of them because he's gotten so much bigger that are like just really annoying and kind of repeat the same shit over and over again at him at nauseum, and he's been vo very vocal about how that like frustrates him. It's like maybe not everybody wants to be as close to their audience as like say me, but um, I feel like some something precious is lost when when you do and i don't want to lose that i want to maintain i want that perfect balance of growing as an uh, as a youtuber and an artist even if that's like down to a number and of uh, people that watch me yeah but i don't want to pass that threshold of oh i'm too big i actually do think for me it's like i just said like a hundred thousand is kind of like when you start to be considered like a, like a real youtuber in a sense or some whatever you want to call that there was um oh and i'm not gatekeeping i'm just throwing out a number <laughs> yeah i get you i just i like there was there was a, a perfect kind of synopsis of like uh, like youtubers like there's numbers and subscribers and then they're usually the ones that get like more ad reads and stuff like that but then there's people who have more concentrated fan bases like they're sub 100k and have like good amounts of people coming in from solely just patreon yeah and it's just like which one would you rather be on which spectrum honestly just the one with the more dedicated niche fan base to be honest 
I do want to reach that that the ideal for me is to make enough just enough money off Patreon and donations and whatnot, and just enough views to like make me feel good at the end of the day, and just enough attention and retention uh to yeah, to keep fueling me to do it, but I don't want it to get over bloated. I don't want it to turn into a horde. I don't want it to become just sort of like mass spam meme. I don't want to entertain kids either. Like, and I'm not even trying to be like discriminatory or like, or like quote unquote ageist. It's just that I, I, I there's a reason why I make like edgy jokes and stuff like that. And now I, I got to like label my stuff as like 18 plus. And ultimately that's probably a good thing. It's going to stop me from growing as much, but it's probably ultimately in the long run a good thing because I'd rather have a slightly more mature audience. Even if my humor isn't exactly mature, it's uh, I would rather be entertaining adults rather than kids. I don't want, I don't want the fucking twelve-year-old Loretta army as the people that fucking watch me. It never ends well for the content creator for the audience. Uh, these people are not your friends. They're these they're they're the immature little spastics. They will turn on you uh, <laughs> in a in a moment's notice, um, and also they give you a bad name. Yes. Just 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 think of all the like good YouTubers that have toxic fan bases. Like even despite everything that I said about Dunky, he has a toxic fan base. Like like I like I don't think Dunky's that bad. I like I think I ha how he like responded to me was shitty. But at the end of the day, I don't think he's a bad youtuber or a bad person yeah um it's and he still makes really fucking good content that hasn't changed but his his audience yeah now I, i've experienced it now i've seen it holy shit his audience sucks <laughs> it's like it's just it's literally screaming children i would be embarrassed i'd be embarrassed if like anyone who was following me felt like they had to fucking defend me on on reddit or twitter or some shit and start screaming at somebody about how they're wrong and you're an idiot and then take one of the things i've said in my videos and just spam quote it at somebody Ugh. yeah no it's i actually, get it it's, it's actually it's, cringe it, people Fuck. quoting it without having their own opinion of their own i didn't watch your video but you're shit uh oh uh -oh, you're nitpicking and biased i win my <laughs> like that it's, it's actually kind of funny but it, like it's only sad that it's just being like thrown around so much um in fact i think one of the first ones i think the first person who said that like copy pasta i i, I hearted it because i actually genuinely found it kind of funny but then i realized like then all of a sudden everyone kept fucking spamming it i was like oh this is actually that was annoying <laughs> It's not, it's not, it's not funny or original. It's just like, I'm a mindless drone. Ha ha. I gotcha. I'm, I said first, do you like that one? <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, I love it. I love it when people say first. I like the ones it, that it, quote verbatim a joke from your video and then say, ha ha. Yeah, it's, it's just a quote. There's nothing really added. And then for some reason it'll get a thousand likes. <laughs> It's like, yes, I I did say that. That or, or or okay, this is very specific. It pisses me off. Okay. But somebody who watches the video and then comments on the video in real time like it's a live chat. Oh. It will be 16 comments by one guy and it goes, "Oh my god, that's hilarious." Out of context. What where, like where's the context? What are you saying that's hilarious to? And then it's like, "Bro, you should have picked up the shotgun. It was right behind the pillar." It's like you realize this is pre-recorded, right? Like, oh, <laughs> like oh, stop. No, no, no. Stop. It's like, oh, and I, I've literally, like, I, I will message those people and I'll be like, yo, um, you know I can't hear you, right? Like the, like, the past me that was in the video, he can't hear you. He's dead. He doesn't exist anymore. That timeline like, is know. gone. <laughs> that timeline is gone. And they'll be like, I know. It's like, <laughs> Why are you talking? <sighs> <laughs> oh my god! Is that is that your army of children? Is that what it is? It's actually yeah. That's the, that's the closest I've ever come. Is like the people who just quote my shit for uh for uh it just 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 as is uh the people who say first, which pretty much everybody gets, and then. 
these weird rare instances where people comment in real time and they leave 16 comments and i have to read all of them because i try to read all the comments and it's just like i'm just scrolling it. it's just like stupid shit out of context like they might as well they might as well be writing their grocery list it's still out of fucking context <laughs> i don't even know what they're talking about it's like it's like bro that was epic it's like what are you talking about the whole video oh no because there's 60 more comments and they all say the same thing they're like well, yo that i mean that it's your job funny. as a content creator to line up the timestamps. <laughs> Lay it out, backtrack, calculate based on when and how and why. YouTubers are really the world's greatest detectives. That's that's what I'm getting from oh, this. Th that's, that's why I've learned from the commentary channels. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, oh. every, everyone's a Sherlock. Oh my god. And they've never, and they've never been wrong. Oh Not once. <laughs> never ever. <laughs> never ever has somebody gotten misinformation and spread it. Oh my god. No, nah, there, there. <laughs> I don't want to shit talk the commentary community too much. There's, there's some really good ones out there, but there's some that literally are just, they're just tabloids essentially. In yeah. YouTube form. <laughs> we've, we've. I think everybody's at least seen a little bit of it, but you know, there's people who come out of the woodworks and I'm like, oh yeah, you guys are actually spitting facts, but then there's like uh, yeah, yeah. this rest of the seventy percent of you that are just, um, your TMC. So uh, maybe stop. <laughs> It's actually, it's super, I fucking love it. It's super commendable because I do like watching commentary uh, community sort of stuff for like news channel stuff. Um, and I think it's, it's, in, it's really commendable when they straight up are trying to give the most unbiased opinion or, or they're trying to weigh, or they try to weigh both sides and they try to put out as much of that as possible. Because I realize that's extra work and it doesn't, it probably won't get as much uh controversy drumming up in the comment section and shit like that but i think that's incredibly commendable and also i feel like i got a clean version of the story i feel like i got a more accurate depiction yeah the, the water isn't as muddy um like uh actually like Bo blacks i really like his videos because he's he's usually pretty fair even when i disagree with him i still feel like he's being pretty reasonable yeah there's you know? and, and as well as the right opinion too yeah, yeah actually it's it's i like blowbacks i like the right opinion they're they're pretty fair and balanced, and I, I like them even even when I I think uh, the right opinion goes too long on one topic, like he's going too precise, like he goes on a tangent a bit. Yeah, kind of feels yeah. like it. <laughs> uh, some, you know what? Sometimes that's literally either just the material creates it, or it's just like secretly. I don't. And this isn't a slight against him, but like sometimes it's like you gotta get you gotta get those minutes in. Yeah, like it's it's either your video is ten minutes or it's nothing apparently on the site because that's how it's fucking set up. It's uh, it's it's either thir it's either like a quick, within thirty second meme video or it's a ten minute video. It can't be in between or else your video is dead. It will not get recommended. <laughs> it doesn't. It will... the, now they're doing like little story like story time updates in the fucking ui for the uh the mobile one if it's like less than a minute it's uh it's shown as like a kind of like a snapchat story yeah and i'm like oh, that i mean at least it'll get those videos exposure but like you're never gonna know who made it i mean even though it cites them never really gonna know who made it you're just gonna flip through all these stories and then you're going on with your day i guess yeah i this is gonna sound fucking weird for me because I usually shit talk YouTube a lot, but I actually really do like the sort of uh, story time update thing that they have. Cause I, and you know, it's so stupid. The community board has been there forever, but I've only just recently started using it, and it's uh, it's actually really good. It's really effective. Yeah. I've noticed that like every time I upload a video now, I have to like make an announcement on the community board. Because, okay, it shouldn't be that way, because if the fucking subs the subscribe button worked the way it did, and if the bell button worked the way it did, we wouldn't have this problem, YouTube. I wouldn't have to doubly, triply notify people on one platform that a video is new and it came out, and oops, you might have missed it because YouTube likes to haha, <laughs> unsubscribe you from me randomly. Um, yeah, that that's fucking stupid. I do like it as a tool, but it's stupid that it exists because, like, the one thing should just work yeah oh um 
had an example for for the right opinion because it was like it was the really weird thing where um i think it was he was talking about the the streamer who wanted a reality show and everything like that and then she had like a mental breakdown and everything and i just got like oh yeah i just sat there and i went for the most part 30 i think it was like an hour long and i sat there and i went you know you're kind of giving i would say too much credit to someone who's like I'm going to say a titty streamer, but at the same time, <laughs> let's give her some benefit of the doubt. <laughs> oh my god. It's it felt like man, she's really not that interesting. Let's 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 just say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um Ah, fuck it. I'll I'll call out a name. I don't give a shit because this p- particular person is terrible. But uh Bad Bunny or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. people were making videos on her and rightly so, but then some people are really milking it. Like they they needed that like they needed those ten minutes and it's like okay, she's not a ten minute long story, let's be real. She's a fucking idiot and all she did uh She talked yes, funny. She, she 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 yeah she said stupid shit and she said why isn't anyone donating to me she was a privileged brat that is it's not worth making a 10 minute fucking video on like you could literally just be like play the clip go what a dumbass and then end it the video could actually be two minutes in length but you know like like and again i'm not again this is even a problem with the youtuber people so so many times are blaming the creator for being like uh making a 10 minute 10 minute and one second video um it's like oh but uh let's be real that's the system that fucking youtube created like they they've set it up this way that we have to make it this way yeah i just it's bad but in in other kind of things i I guess i wanted to jump to that i was going to save it for later but the idea of like i guess there you've named a few names of people that you you kind of like like and follow and everything and Mm -hmm. honestly you're you're you you kind of stated that you're not like hitting that that big big youtuber time but you're still like at least bigger than uh, most sub (laughs) one thousands yeah but do you ever have any fears of like uh, associations or, or or i guess due to like cancel culture or anything like that like <laughs> like let's let's name uh, off the big one er uh <laughs> uh yeah no it's um no not really because you know what i think that it's so obvious that he's not a villain he's not a bad guy yeah even though people love to try and make him into one and if it catches up to me in the real world uh, they're fucking idiots, and it's easily disproved. Um, and I know that that's not how you fix it. You can't just throw logic at these people. And unfortunately, just drumming up drama is enough to sort of ruin your life. Like, it takes away... It can get you fired from your job. It can get you, like, blacklisted. It can get you, like, outed. People will, like, ostracize you. Like, the damage will be done. And then you, you basically have to, like, sort of win your way back into people's favors but the unfortunate thing is that that's just the way that it is like if something gets taken away from you and it's never earned back it's half the reason why people like cancel culture is so prominent because it works it's just it's gonna work people knee jerk will just do the worst thing to somebody and worry about the consequences later and not stop to think oh maybe like hey let's hear their side of it hey let's let's hear if like they're actually a good person um I think that even if specifically somebody called me, like, this is this is what they're going to call me if they ever wanted to try and call me out for, like, being associated with ER. They'll, they'll call me some sort of, like, Nazi or Nazi sympathizer, but he simply isn't. And if that happens in the real world and somebody, like, call, finds out, doxes me and, like, finds out where I work and then calls them and starts being like, you know you have a, a real-life Nazi for you, for you. Um... Like, there's one of two things that's going to happen. Like, they, my, my boss will probably laugh about it because I work in a kitchen and he'd be like, like, you're a fucking idiot. Uh, or I do get fired, but I can easily, like, y- you know, I, I could, I could, I can literally turn that into a case. Like, I could sue my work for that. Yeah. And, like, what and, are you and, doing and, even and, if you were a Nazi? Are you, are you putting, uh, are you putting Nazi salutes in their soup? Like, what's going on? 
<laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And it like it, it's uh, and I, I'm not one, and it, it's so it's completely misplaced, um, and it's bullshit. I think that like if it does happen, I'm just gonna roll with the punches and just state my case. Like I've dealt with fucking, I've dealt with drama in the past, even recently, and all you have to do is just sort of like put your fucking feet in the sand and just like get a stiff off your lip and just fucking deal with it. Um just state your case and like don't change your story to state it as it is and like plant your feet and just sort of fucking wait it out um it was funny too actually speaking of like the, the donkey video a little bit uh i i made like a new pinned tweet where i was like i uh, like after uh the hugest wave of them started pouring in and i said that like oh you know i'm eating above that humble pie i'm looking back at my video and i called myself out on everything that i was like wrong for but people thought it was an apology, and it wasn't. Not one point in that pinned tweet do I actually ever say sorry. And people were saying, it's like, oh, Mark, you shouldn't have backpedaled like that. I'm like, I didn't. <laughs> I'm literally just, it's like, there are objectively things wrong with my video, and then I'm stating it to look self-aware, or at least like I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Because it, it's, it, it's, there's two sides of it. It makes me look self-aware, um, which is something that I can't say for Donkey. Um, it's, and it's also about like making yourself, and it also, it's about making yourself look better in that situation. Um, I don't know, like, like even just like how you handle a situation. And then the second part of it was, it's all true. None of that was like fake. What I said, I, I, I really do feel like I had to like, kind of take a step back and look at my video. Um, and I should have, uh, curated it better. Should have, it should have been more refined. Um, and the biggest problem really was that it was like just a straight, upload of a stream essentially um uh, and that's essentially what i said but like people took yeah people took it as like a fucking apology or some shit which it was not i don't apologize for pretty much anything i said in there unless it was actually misplaced like the whole fundamental core of that video was me saying that i felt like his video was disingenuous that didn't change no yeah. matter how much people have screamed at me my position on that hasn't changed even slightly and it's just that. And also, like, uh, unless you're actually objectively wrong, don't change your mind on shit if people are going to fucking scream at you. Don't do what the masses want. If if you really feel like you're right, right or wrong, if you really feel like you're right, if you can't even see the truth, if, if you don't even, like, if, if you're objectively wrong but you can't see it, still, it's better to stand your ground than to fucking crumple and just be like, oh, I'll just do whatever you guys want me to. Uh, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, it never looks good. Which is stupid that, like, what I did wasn't an apology, but I got seen as one. Like, I was literally... So, like, at this point, um, I, I the only reason I go to that video anymore is just to, like, yell at people in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it's, like, it's it's turned into, like, my own personal, like, bit of entertainment. But, um, like, I'm petty. I'll, I'll fucking say it. Like, I'm not, a, I'm not above it. Oh, so it but, gives um, you power, big man? <laughs> yeah, it, makes, it gives me big pee-pee energy. It makes me feel like a big man, big, strong boy. <laughs> big, strong man yelling at children. Girls. Yeah. <laughs> I'm literally, like, that statue of the, like, naked man, like, 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 hurling babies in the air. Like, he's, he's, he's fighting <laughs> off all these infants. Like, he's beating the shit out of them. That's how I feel. I feel like a big, strong man. I have a bunch of fucking like undeveloped brained retards on the internet. <laughs> I'm so smart. I'm smarter than these actual retards. <laughs> I'm this. I'm literally the cream of the crop when it comes to retards. I'm the. I'm the one who evolved. <laughs> I am the. I am the fish that. I am the closest thing the to Cro Magnon. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I am the all alpha and omega of retards. Um, and that's it. That's all it's become. But people are like screaming at it. And somebody was like, uh, tried quoting me. And it's like, oh yeah, you fucking backpedaled. You apologize. I'm like, where? And they they literally quoted. They just copied that entire pin tweet and they put it up. And at the end it says, uh, well, okay, you didn't actually say you're sorry. <laughs> but you didn't backpedal, I mean, but uh, sweet. it's like you you actually doubled down on some of your arguments, but. Uh, I mean, at, at a glance, it looked like an apology. No, as an explanation, there's a big fucking difference. Kind of like how I apparently contradicted myself, even though that was me going, oh, uh, on a further uh, further review, it seems like I'm going to kind of 
like compromise on my view on this one thing because yes my opponent is technically correct in this sense and i will agree with them Uh oh you contradicted yourself now your whole argument is ju like just illegitimized revoked like, so oh boy time to sorry that 47 minutes worth of video gone because you said one thing that out of context looks like you just said the opposite of what you said previously it was literally like, oh yeah, no, the controls are really good in this game. Oh wait, oh, well, I guess the deal con controls aren't like that great. Uh-oh, exposed. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> gotcha. Whip the nade on you, bitch. It's, it's, I think that's actually the most upsetting thing. If he actually caught me on something legitimate, I think I'd be like, damn, like, uh, he's, he's right. And, and that's the thing. I call, I did a better job of calling me out than Dunkey. And that's fucking upsetting. Cause I literally straight up said that one of my arguments was invalid because you can go a certain route. I spent like five minutes talking about how the route he was going was bad and stupid. And then I took it myself and I even did it on a live stream just to test it out so that nobody could like, I couldn't lie essentially. Uh, and we did it. And I went, oh, no, Dunkey was right. Oh, shit. It's like, all right, point to him. That's how easy it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's how, that's how easy it is. It's not that bad. Like, fuck, you can be wrong. It's allowed. It's just, like, better to turn around and go, oops, I was wrong. Oh, God, it's just it's frustrating. Now, to take a break from yeah. talking about the donkey video, because I know you you love talking about it ad nauseum. I, 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 ad nauseum. I fucking love it. <laughs> uh, what's, I guess, let's get a little bit into cooking. Let's get in that kitchen. <laughs> Let's dip in, boy. Because I love cooking. And uh, I recently, since I had to move out and everything, I had to throw away my spice rack and everything. Oh, no. <laughs> Fuck. Most of my rest of my cooking, I have like 35 pounds of rice in my uh, in my storage unit. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Nothing to spice it with, but I guess I'll buy some garlic every once in a while. <laughs> but, like, all right. So... I guess one of these questions I put on here in a very, very, like, uh, 3 a.m. mood. Uh, do you think you could beat Bobby Flay in Iron Chef? <laughs> Bobby Flay? Yeah, he was the, the Eng I'm pretty sure that was the American host of fucking Iron Chef. Oh, God. Uh, I... D Do an easier I, one? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think I could, like... No, I don't think I could beat Bobby Flay. I Let's be real. I think he's clocked in more hours than I have. And yeah, Okay. <laughs> just, I thought I'd throw that out there. Just, like, saying, oh, do you think he'd beat Bobby Flay? Because he's, like, the, the, the celebrity chef I can think of that I I've could... seen the least cook. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I could put up a fight. But I think ultimately I'd lose. I think that he's probably just got more uh, variety in the kitchen and stuff like that, and more uh, across the board training and stuff. Yeah, I was never even classically trained. I was just trained by peers. So I caught, <laughs> I caught one of your streams, and you were watching uh, uh, that one gaming mom uh, and like her son, uh, like cook and uh, everything. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Oh, is, is that the signal? Was that the long moan to let you know you're done? <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, that, that means we need to wrap it up soon because I can't talk about them for too long. <laughs> no, kidding. no, no. Um, I, I'm meaning it, to, to bring it up as, as a transition. What is the biggest misconception about cooking that you see too many people fuck up? Oh, God. Um, I think the number one thing is there's never too much of something. Like, you know, it's, uh, there's never too much of a good thing. Oh, the good bullshit. thing. Okay. It's like, it's, it's like, I'm going to make this pasta and I'm going to use all the garlic in my fridge. All of it. All of it for one dish. I mean, you can't technically use too much garlic. Garlic's amazing. It tastes so great. You can just shower things and garlic. You just eat the whole cold, gonna, whole raw. It's, Why not? Yeah, it's just a flavor enhancer. And it, that, which means if you add an, a, a disgusting amount of it it just enhances the flavor <laughs> and the, like like this 
fucking brainlit idea that like why haven't like these like these amateurs who are like who clearly don't know too much about cooking and they're like why hasn't science discovered this yet it's like why don't you use it's like technically they're a flavor enhancer so you just need to use copious disgusting amounts of them and it will just technically taste better yeah more salt more pepper an unreasonable amount it's gonna taste amazing they're flavor enhancers it just tastes better <laughs> fucking brainlet no there's there's moderation and there's a reason for it like um even using um a, a, any uh like aroma uh like herbs and stuff like that like using thyme and garlic and um uh rosemary and whatnot like uh, when you're like pan frying something you want to use a sparing amount you really don't want to fucking like cover like I'm imagining somebody just like pan frying a chicken breast and they like wrap it in a like an actual blanket weave like something you see at like a, like a pagan festival of like time. <laughs> it's like in a straight jacket of time and they're cooking it. Oh in it. no. It's it's going to be it's going to be too much. It's going to be too much. Don't do it like that. Don't fucking overindulge. It's like oh man, if I just take this really expensive truffle oil and just douse whatever no. fucking meal i'm eating in it if i drown whatever fucking like i'm eating a steak that's another thing steak is so good in the simplest ways possible a little salt a little pepper that's all you fucking need that's all you need in terms of like the spice that you need to put on it you can get a little bit fancy and like have some sort of like specialty spice like i i use uh, i personally use montreal steak spice it's, it's a really nice blend it's like a different uh, variety of like peppers and uh and cured salts that's mostly it it's just cured salt and paprika and stuff like that but it, like that should be the limit to how fancy you get with a fucking steak it should just be like molden salt or some sort of like sea salt flake like just a nice salt like what you do, don't like, you, you know, don't like, like steaks that are just layered in lowry seasoning oh fucking christ <laughs> Or, or a steak that's covered in a sauce. Have the sauce as an option, you know? You, you, you can, you, you can, uh, it usually, typically, I think it's best to just use its own juices as its, like, as its sauce. You just pour that shit back on top of it after it's bled out. Um, and that's, that's perfect. But then people will go, oh, that's a really nice steak. Time to get the barbecue sauce, and they just start spraying it. Um, yeah, you know, simplicity goes a long fucking way cooking wise. And I think that people overspice, overseason, they overuse, uh, their portion amounts are way too fucking big. Um their plates are overloaded. Um people really I, I like I think this is especially like sort of like it's a stereotype of me saying this, but I think that it, like is especially an American and a Canadian thing that like you want to like load up your plate in a way. You want your portion sizes to be like fucking massive, but like even just from a technical standpoint, like I mean like if you need enough food to fill yourself and it's good, like like what I'm eating on a daily basis is good food, but I'm not eating it for the taste. I'm eating it for its functionality. Like just just now before the interview, like this is what I, this is the daily meal that I make for myself, especially with my restricted diet. It was a pan fried butter braised chicken breast okay um basmati rice like a cup worth portion on a plate um a whole avocado and a little bit of like the the sauce or the dipping or like whatever sort of flavoring was like a bit of like uh confit garlic that i made and you really don't need that that's just something extra i'm doing for myself those three things three three ingredients three main things a chicken breast protein rice your filler avo your fat that is enough that's gonna keep me going for the rest of the goddamn day i don't need to eat anything else and it was just three fucking things it wasn't a giant overloaded plate and that's enough and like people really need to learn their portioning and they need to learn what food does to them too like that's a that's a really evenly balanced plate right there and it's more about function than it is um taste or like that but i intentionally make it as tasty as possible because i want to enjoy my fucking meal i don't want to if if we if, if we ever find ourselves in a future where we're all eating fucking 
a, a, like M and M pill like sized pills that are a whole meal. It's got all the nutrition into a pill. That's a nightmare scenario for me. That's a, that's yeah. a nightmare. It's efficient, yes, but that's going too far. What if you just crack um, open the pill and put it on a on a chicken? You know, <laughs> fry it up. <laughs> you know, like like people actually people find like little hacks and shit like that and like ways to sort of like bulk out their meals as much as possible. Um, yeah. Um, like, but I think that people should like. I think everybody should cook, and everyone can cook. That's that's the crazy thing. It's not a, it's not a, a, a it's not a secret skill, especially in this day and age, dude. Half this shit. I I'm I've been cooking in kitchens for like ten plus years now, like alone, and I go to YouTube to learn shit. I I go to like yes I I'm I've worked I've worked under like Michelin star chefs. I've worked under some like really nice chefs that like know what the fuck they're doing. One one is a, I won't say who. Um, but one is literally a, a like now doing a talk show. He he has his own cooking show like on C C B C. Oh, um, cool. yeah. It, or sorry, it's global. Um, that was somebody I was working under. I'm sure I learned a lot from him. But you know what? You can learn all of that on fucking YouTube. You can learn anything. Fucking subscribe to Gordon Ramsay, a, like YouTube channel. You will learn so fucking much. It's ridiculous. Um, it will make you a fucking more knowledgeable about what you put in your body which i think everybody should do i'm not even like a health nut i've had to become one person well i guess i have become one but like i'm not gonna push that on other people as much i mean you have Just, to because uh I, I had to because of my fucking illness and yeah. shit like that now my <laughs> diet is super fucking limited that i have to curate everything that's put in my fucking body now um i can barely eat out at restaurants because like because filler people put soy in fucking everything now it's a bunch of soy boys, a bunch of Ooh. soy cook. Um, but everybody should at least know what the fuck is going in their body. Everyone should be at least knowledgeable in how to go to your green grocer, know what to pick, and cook for yourself for every every once in a while, man. It's so it's such a fucking nice experience. It doesn't take long at all, and you guaranteed eventually you're gonna get the hang of it that you will cook better for yourself than anyone in a fucking restaurant could unless it's like a fucking high-end restaurant where you're paying way too much for a meal yeah it's it's just a win-win scenario and you're saving money you're saving money by buying raw ingredients it's uh it's an absolute fucking win-win i think that everybody should learn how to fucking do this i see so many friends of mine that just like it's all takeout it's all pre-made frozen dinners it's just like it's depressing it's, and i'm trying to try <laughs> yeah everybody should learn how to cook and unfortunately it, it, now everybody is and they're trying to and the fucking stores are out of all the raw ingredients literally i i was on my way home yesterday from work and there was I, the, the grocery store i went to no potatoes no vegetables no meat and I, like any meat that's uh, so weird people want preservatives yeah. when you're like going for like a, a, a an apocalypse <laughs> Yeah, here I thought I had the advantage. I was like, I'm just going to spend, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to spend my money on like steaks and chicken and everything like that. I've been like wrapping my chicken, putting it in a Tupperware and then freezing it for later. Um, So like I'm stockpiling it. But uh, yeah, it, it turns out everyone's got the exact same idea. And uh, the only thing I could salvage, I'm not even fucking kidding. I think I left that store with chips. I left with Dorito chips because for some reason I can eat Dorito chips um, and like uh salsa chips as well and that was it all right that's it so <laughs> i had one question lined up in cooking but it also got me thinking about the other question the other set of questions on cooking um okay. and i'm gonna put do it like a lightning round just to, just to kind of do it yes yeah I'll, okay just just because it's kind of iron chef themed but it's also like the idea of like what dish name a dish and if you've cooked with it before uh on each vegetable or meat uh let's go with rutabaga oh and, okay in rutabaga yeah rutabaga oh fuck oh i'm gonna i'm just gonna say no because i think the last time i cooked with rutabaga it was like fucking it was years ago i can't remember <laughs> I'm okay sorry. um turnips turnips Ooh turnips oh uh oh i definitely made uh fucking turnips yeah i made some sort of soup 
with that. I'm big into making soups. In fact, most of these answers probably will be like a stew or something. Okay. I can't remember what the fuck what else went into it. It was like um Oh, I don't actually don't think there was a there was a protein. I think I actually it was a straight vegetable soup. It was kind of like one of those really like creamy. I think I think it even like blended it. it uh, I think it went with um uh beets for Ooh. color and flavor. Ooh, and it was boy. literally like blended into like just a uh uh, uh like a oh, uh like a really thick stock and that was it. It was really nice. Oh yeah, it, was, it sounds like wonderful. Food you get sucked through your teeth, but it was uh, it was good. Yeah. All right. Um boar meat boar meat no i've never cooked with boar oh it's it's absolutely gorgeous <laughs> actually you know yeah i think it's a shame that we don't fucking use enough wild game meats and stuff like that like the fact that there's so little deer and boar and moose we had a markets. butcher up here uh, like at our, at our, at our cash wise oh my god they had boar they had goat they had lamb they had uh, oh one of the one one of the ones i'm gonna ask you about bison yeah yes i've had bison burgers and i've also had a sausage made of bison mm. it's good it's really isn't it? fucking good <laughs> yeah i wasn't the one cooking it but uh we it's straight up like i said bison burger it, it's like it was a, like a burger and a hot dog essentially like a big fucking giant bratwurst wiener and a bun but it was it was fucking it was amazing have you ever had a uh, snake no, I've never had snake. Okay, B- wonderful face place in Denver that, or in Minneapolis, that was able to actually make steak and rabbit burgers. Oh wow! Oh, wow. oh rabbit's great though. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> uh. Sorry, rutabaga. But I was uh. Asparagus. Asparagus. Oh yeah, plenty of times. Actually, it's one of my favorite. Um veggie compliments to like if i'm making a plate it's uh if i'm cooking with steak the the arrangement usually is the steak mashed potatoes or fingerling potatoes and it's usually asparagus it's uh i'll usually blanch it pan fry it with uh, chili flakes um and some olive oil and that's usually how it goes and just like just soft enough but just crunchy enough like the have some kind of texture to it i think it's i think especially asparagus is like it's either asparagus or broccolini is like the perfect complement, like oh veg to a steak. That I, is usually what I'm making. I love it. You're making me hungry, but it's also all right. One <laughs> yeah. last one. Well, two last ones. Okay. Durians. Durians. Ooh. Oh fuck. When have I used them last? Oh. Uh, no, it's been a while. Oh fuck. I can't even remember. Oh shit! No, I, I got. Uh, fuck! I'm gonna have to skip. I can't even remember. I'd be sitting here forever thinking. Can't even uh, think of a dish while. you'd make with it right now. What would I fucking do? Um. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> you caught me. I I haven't even thought about them in forever. <laughs> You know what's weird? My mom was a huge fan of them. Really? Was o- like always, yeah, yeah. My, always making them in the kitchen. Um, my, actually, in fact, the half the reason why I got into cooking was my mom was a chef, um, and she introduced us to a lot of foods. But like, I can't even remember what she was fucking using them for. But I remember she would just go on and on about them, as well as um, there's a specific uh, Swedish berry that you can get, which uh, usually the Swedes will use. Uh, with uh swedish meatballs mm-hmm. and i'm forgetting the name of them but um yeah she's she's big into shit from other cultures or like that and she's like uh we were really well brought up in terms of like having diversity in the kitchen when we were growing up we didn't know how spoiled we were apparently i was getting filet mignon on my birthdays and i turned to my like famously i turned to my fucking mom and said mom i'm tired of filet mignon for my birthdays i was a fucking little kid i was like eight <laughs> And by the way, she was dirt poor, <laughs> and I didn't know this. Oh. So she's like, "You little shit!" Like, oh my god, she was, she was splurging like on a nice steak for her like her eight year old son on his birthday. Well, there was well, she was scraping by. Oh my god, oh my I didn't know how Lord. well I, I didn't know how good I had it, <laughs> or how bad it really was. <laughs> Fuck. All right, okra. Okra. 
I don't even think I know what the fuck that is. I'm not even kidding. More is of a, a it's spice? a southern, mostly southern vegetable. So, oh, it's a vegetable. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't think I've ever even heard of okra. I'm not even kidding. Well, I can say that you probably the only thing that really like the deep south. My mom was raised in the deep south, so we had okra a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Most people in the Midwest like never really heard of it, but it was a uh, yeah fried okra. Of course, of course, you need to fry it if you're from the south. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, uh, try everything. But the last one, plantains. Plantains. Ooh. Uh, I think the last time I used them... Actually, I think this was for a restaurant. Maybe I shouldn't... Oh shit, maybe I shouldn't say that. And sometimes I have to be really careful about saying what they cooked, so I don't, like, say where I've worked. Well, how about um, something you cooked at home with a plantain? Well... <laughs> okay, well... Yeah, I guess it doesn't fucking matter. Anyways, I, I'll just say how we prepared them. Um, I'm pretty sure we were slicing them. Uh, well, like we'd get them on a mandolin and slice them to really thin slices. Um, and they were being used in like, I think it was like a like like a bed for something else, or it was like a salad. I can't. Oh fuck! Now I'm having trouble remembering. But they were like heavily seasoned. I think maybe baked. Yeah, yeah. That that's it. So it was it was a. Well, fuck, we were really, you, uh, yeah, I think that's how we prepared them. So sliced, uh, s yeah, thinly sliced, baked with like olive oil and uh, seasoning. And then from there, I think we like fucking, we mashed them up or something. Or they were like almost like a bed for a, like a salad or something. It was really good. And it had that like kind of like almost smoky flavor to it. Ooh. It, it was nice. We might have even been smoking it. Maybe that's what it was instead of an oven. We were, like, smoking them. But, uh, yeah, sorry, vaguely remember, but it was it was really fucking tasty. Okay. Yeah, these big plantains. I thought I'd get some, some cooking questions and ingredient questions out of the way. And, and in the meantime, you know, try some okra. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, yeah. hey, probably not fucking fry some. the shit out of it, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. What are your favorite cooking uh, food shows inclusive mm. to youtubers oh alex this is simply named alex um i guess technically gordon ramsay's a a cooking youtuber now i, I guess mean, he has a channel yeah. I, guess. I guess he's a celebrity but um uh oh shit what's his name i can't remember fuck he's this really eccentric chef who's kind of a Big, he's kind of like he's kind of a he's a kind of a big guy kind of fat um tons of tattoos like he's got sleeves he's got like a little mustache and he's just super eccentric oh. and he fucking loves cooking you can tell and he's he's definitely like 100 percent just somebody who's just who just works in the industry whereas like you can consider like gordon ramsay yes he's worked in kitchens his entire life he's a michelin star chef and shit but he's kind of like a celebrity chef yeah he this guy is like He's been working as a chef, chef, his entire fucking life, and he just suddenly got into like YouTube and stuff. And he's just like foul mouth. He's the he's a little deranged. It's like that's like a real chef to me. That's like, a real. So he's one. a little mentally unhead, <laughs> unhinged. Um, I forget his name, but my roommate introduced me to him, and I forget his fucking name, but he's really good. I fucking wish I could just recall the name, but it's uh yeah, I really love Alex fucking eccentric little frenchman who just does like cooking experiments and stuff he's fucking fantastic yeah um i can't think of too many others i actually um yeah i think it, the tier list of people that i watch on youtube goes from like uh animators and gaming channels and video essays and then below that the, for the amount of people i watch are like like filmmakers and then it's like cooking channels which is probably like three or something Okay. I, th I thought I would ask. I thought you'd throw out some, like, maybe binging with Babish or... Oh, shit. Yes. That, oh, my God. How could I forget? Sorry. Yeah. Binging with Babish. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's about it, though. I only Like, again, I only watch, like, about three people. But yeah. Does that even sound right to you? Three people? <laughs> three, four. Okay. It's, um, I can't I can't remember the name of that other guy. I feel really fucking bad because it's, like, the perfect time. I'm, like, I'm literally actively looking for him right fucking now. But you can't just type in fat happy chef and get like accurate. Fat results. deranged chef. Give me that one. Fat crazy man chef. 
the one who goes to <laughs> diners, drive-ins, and dives. No, it's definitely not that guy. It's definitely not that guy. You know what's crazy is like every – so I work in the industry, and he's come through Vancouver and shit. And he's, he's come through everywhere I've ever worked, essentially. Um, everyone says he's an asshole in person. <laughs> every, everyone says really? he's an asshole. Really? Yeah. yeah. Did he grab a bunch of <laughs> Snickers and go to the front of the cash <laughs> Oh, my God. Um – He's just like when the camera's on, he's like super on, but he's also like incredibly invasive. He loves to like get in the most awkward situations, like physically. Like he'll just step in places and like walk in front of people and stuff like that. He's like, he's no more presenting and rather than being like uh, polite. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it, it's it's all about the cameras. If the cameras are rolling, it's all about like the shot. And then as soon as they stop. He, like, is instantly on his phone and is ignoring the shit out of the chef that he's, like, working with. And he's, like, off doing something. He, like, completely shuts down as a human being and then walks away. <laughs> as soon as they're like, yeah, cut. Good it's lord. It's just, like, he suddenly doesn't give a shit about your restaurant or your food. Even if he was, like, singing praise, he suddenly just turns around and walks away and gets a call or something. And it's like... <laughs> That's what, you know what I've heard that from multiple people, so I'm willing to bet that it's uh, it, not that it's true, but it's most likely fairly accurate. But yeah, there's a, there's a chance there. Yeah, no, I had a when I worked at a, a restaurant that I worked for for like five years. I loved it, loved it to death. Uh, they asked her about not the, not the producers, but the other coworkers and everything. And they brought it up as like a serious thing, is they were they were looking for restaurants to go to, and she, oh God, bless her little Asian heart, she loved it. She like, no, he fat, he rude, fuck him. <laughs> oh, oh my God. She, she, she like, she like did not give a shit. She's like, no, I don't like him, I don't like him. Yeah. And and thank God for that because oh man, if if he did that shit while she was in the kitchen. He would have thrown. She would have thrown that. That four eight Asian lady, fifty five, would have thrown that three hundred pound man out that door. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't fucking doubt it. Jesus Christ. It's uh, uh man. I mean, like, there, there's there's so much that there's so much territory um with uh, in kitchens and a lot of ego too. So you never really want to step on somebody's. Oh yeah, and stuff like that. especially but, especially it, if it's like something that they're they're like really passionate about and everything like that. Yeah, like and although his purpose is to promote your restaurant, like it doesn't matter if you're gonna be rude and invasive and sort of like stomp all over the people. Like it's the equivalency of like, oh, will you work for like clout or commission or or, or yeah, will you work for it's like it's like can I pay you in clout? Can I uh, can I pay you in exposure? <laughs> Yeah, exposure. Well, twenty dollars do after the work is done. Oh God, it'd be awful. Um, because at the end of the day, like uh, whatever exposure they're giving you isn't worth it. Because like you have to, you don't shut down your restaurant, but you are essentially. Uh, it, it's really it it really sucks. I've been in plenty of restaurants where they suddenly brought in like camera crews and stuff, and they brought in like. Uh, like like places like guy fury um it's like you gotta eat here other like shows have come through places that i've worked at and it's so invasive and shuts everything down and it's always a nuisance but we're doing it because of the exposure right but like you know just try to make it as a happy of an experience for us as well because we're we're technically like we're 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 sacrificing customers and we're sacrificing our precious time in order for you to film here. Yeah, it's a two way street. You're doing us a favor. We're doing we're giving you content and a place to cover. But uh, fuck, man, just don't be a dick about it. It should like don't the the crew yeah, get, the crew size should be big enough for like a shoestring YouTuber. Yeah, and and we've been told to cook for the crew to feed everybody. It's like, oh, come on. I mean, like, we're uh, we're doing this for you. So, you know, can you just make us, like, a, like a couple, like, can you, can you just make us, like, a small buffet so we don't have to pay for a catering? It's like, I mean, we're already here and there's food. You should just be able to make us the food. It's like, 
uh it's like like and we're in the middle of like a rush it's like rush hour and they're I tell, they're asking us to make double the amount that we're currently making just for them it's good like, lord could you not bring a fucking snickers could you not <laughs> like could you not just time? bring no yeah it's impromptu see there's there's things they they could get that without any fuss or muss if they just uh gone about it a better way but we've I've had that where one of the league guys was just suddenly like asked us and I won't say who, but like one of the hosts of the channel or whoever is in charge of showrunner was just like, Can you just like make everybody like some food? Because everybody's pretty hungry. And it was like we're in the middle of a rush and they're already like blocking up the restaurant with like lights and camera crews and wires everywhere, which is a huge fucking like tripping hazard. Like they take care of it, but like they're in the way. They're in they're just in the way. That's the thing. Bottom line, they're in the way of the customers. They're in the way of the cooks. Um, no gaffers it's, it's, and best boys to really, like, handle the shit on fly. Yeah. God. I, what a fucking nightmare. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, so don't make it harder. <laughs> yeah. All right. So going forward with, uh, with cooking, you said you've cooked and everything like that. And I guess what are your... I guess, what are your, your aspirations and kind of goals with, like, career-wise? Oh, God. I have fucking no real idea. I just want to do things, and then I just kind of hope that they'll happen. So, uh, I guess I'm not I'm not really thinking too long-term, but, um, oh, God. Uh, uh, what do you think? Too much of a big question? No, no, no. Uh I think what my ultimate goal is, is I don't know how long I'm going to be doing YouTube for. Uh, I have constantly hinted and teased that I'm probably going to quit this stuff at some point. I think I even, like, the last time I talked about it, I said, like, a year. We'll see. Um, I was giving, giving myself one last year of YouTube, and then I was probably going to move on to something else. Uh, but, again, that's up in the air. I don't know if I'll take that back or what, and I hope that doesn't disappoint people, but it's the it changing tide. It, it's uh, At the time, that felt like right now I'm starting to kind of question it. Um, in fact, if I quit YouTube then, right when I said that, and I'm stuck in the current situation I am now, I'd probably be broke and penniless and crying and selling my body on the streets and slinging some of that corona dick. Yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you could also always do what Demolition D did, fucking leave for five years. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, actually, no, I'm not even kidding. That's not a bad idea. I actually would, I, I romanticize the idea of just fucking going away for a very long time and then coming back randomly. That's amazing. I love that he did that. What a fucking Chad. Even if he graces, even if this is the last time we ever see him, it was nice that it just happen one more time like for all time's uh, sake yeah it's uh like I, I guess the difference between then and his last video was that we expected there was going to be more videos when he made that last one and then they just didn't come so that's what made it disappointing but if at this point i'm happy if this is his last video because like i'm now kind of like prepped for it. i'm ready the tears have stopped no more tears only only happy dreams now only his streams um, you're right <laughs> oh, yeah only streams more like yeah uh he, he's a great streamer though i'm glad that he kept some sort of like online presence and persona and stuff like that it's uh because he's fucking hilarious i i didn't watch the game awards except for curated through demolition d and it was fucking hilarious like i would not have wanted to watch the game awards unless it was through the lens of demo yeah and it was perfect um yeah, he's he's amazing. I hope that he has some sort of return, but uh, I don't want to remain too optimistic and then be let down again. But it's just cool that he put the effort in. That was really it was very chat of him. Yeah. Very 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 next level. Throwing it out there um, is just a little little side question, side tangent. Would you yeah. want to edit for him? Yes, absolutely. I even took footage of some of his Dark Souls stuff and I like turned it into something. Um, it's not he doesn't upload it, but like some other guy just has like uploaded parts of like and it's just like pretty much per, per like pro bono like nobody uh nobody's getting paid to do this people are just doing it purely out of love and one of his dark souls videos is mine i'm not even gonna say which <laughs> was it the one where he threw up in the microphone for like hours <laughs> 
Uh, I don't. Uh, I won't say. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but I, 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 you can tell I'm smiling. This is, but I don't know if that says anything. But I, I know of that. Let's just say that. I, I know of that instance. Yeah, it's um, beautiful. Yeah, that was. <laughs> oh my god! And then the, the snapping. Oh, <laughs> so good. The snapping oh just snapping for no reason. Um. Okay. Um. Sorry. Is is. As far, as far as future, I want to get more into filmmaking eventually. I've got enough equipment now. Not en- not enough, but I have quite a lot that I should be doing more of it. I think that the only things I need now are some professional lights and some better audio equipment. And that's it. I already got a really good audio. Like, I already got a good mic, which I'm currently using right now. And uh, I just need more of that shit. And then I want to actually tackle making a short film. I'll build up enough money, get myself like a good couple grand in pocket, and then see if I can make a short. Try my hand at it. If I fail, that's cool. I've learned from it. And maybe I'll even learn like not to pursue that as much anymore. Instead, I'll just become uh, a commission-based cinematographer. I'll just like, I'll be like, yo, I have all this equipment. You don't, no need to rent anything. I'm a, literally a wet hire is what it's called, where it's like, you hire a guy, he has all the equipment, he just comes with it, so you don't have to pay for rentals. And they show up, they shoot everything, and then they just like hand over the the day to chip. All the like all the like footage. Yeah. And that's it. And that's it. You get paid per session and you you're making bank. And I'd like to get into that even. Even if that's all it is. Even if I don't end up making movies myself, like directed, written by where the credits are literally just Mark English at nauseum. Um, that's cool. I just want to do filmmaking. It's always been a, my number one passion, and I want to finally get into that. Uh, so I think that's where I'm leaning towards future-wise. In the meantime, I'm just testing myself. I'm learning every day. Every day I'm studying something that's film-related, and I'm just slowly building myself up. I have the equipment on hand, so I can just go out and shoot whenever I want, which is great. Um, I think it's just a matter of time. I just wish I had more time. I wish that I had. A, I wish that YouTube could just pay for me to do this full time. That I could just quit my uh, kitchen job and just do this all the time. And then I would have the time to do more of this like extracurricular stuff. I mean, if you did more YouTube streams, yeah, or stream and stuff. Um, that's that's the future for me. Yeah. I just want to lean more into this sort of uh, filmmaking aspect. And if that means that I have to do more YouTube and streaming stuff, then so be it. And I mean, I love it right now to begin with. I just usually, the only thing that's got me so jaded is just the site itself. I see it going downhill. Slowly, yeah. So. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just one of those feelings. And I, I just, <clears throat> as... I guess I was in line with that, and I, I'm not really sure if you fully answered this question, but it, it's kind of like you've answered it, but it, I want to ask it more directly. Do you okay. think you're following your dreams? Yes, actually. And you know what? Um, surprisingly, I didn't know what I... Like, for, like a lot of people who come out of high school and they don't know what the fuck they want, even though I had a skill, I clear... Like, since age 11, it was very clear that I wanted to to get into filmmaking and then i was already i've owned i owned multiple cameras i was like becoming an editor at age 11 with like vhs tapes and shit and dv camcorders and i was i was working on that since like 11 years old and it was very clear that like that's what i wanted to do but i was still torn and confused over what to do and how to do it when i came out of high school so i i fucking i bummed around for a few years which was terrible but i think that gave me some serious life lessons i think that i'm finally actually doing what i want with my life within the last two years of my life that i'm finally for the first time in my life things are like on track if not I'm doing what i've always wanted i never knew that i wanted to do youtube and i wanted to do videos for the for for it i didn't think it would ever be sustainable i didn't think it would be like i didn't know i was gonna be doing gaming stuff i mean like uh i mean fuck it uh and that might change someday like gaming is technically like gaming channels are technically on a technical level they're on the like decline yeah but uh it is like 
how I curate my jokes and my style and stuff like that. They might never change. I had no idea back then that this is what I was going to be doing. But now that I'm in the middle of it, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. It it I don't say that I want to quit YouTube in a positive way like it, YouTube like doing what I'm doing isn't actually bringing me down. I don't get like depressed getting into my chair and editing videos like Spider-Man and Life is Strange and like Gal Gun or whatever the fuck. Uh, no matter how stupid, I don't like that doesn't like deter me or depress me or put me off. I fucking love that and I live for it. It's just I think the platform and the landscape is changing in really negative ways. But I think that what I'm doing right now is the closest I've gotten to a dream job in my entire life. And I guess technically if I keep on track, things are just going to get better. So... Yeah, I get it. Unless, unless everybody finds out that I follow an actual Nazi on Twitter. Oh no, not the Nazi! <laughs> <laughs> I I can't wait. I mean, what connections do I have? What 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 are people gonna take away from me? At the end of the day, like I don't have like any real affiliations with people. I'm not partnered with anybody. Like the worst they could do is like call my job and say I'm a Nazi. But honestly, debatable whether or not they would fire me over being a Nazi. They just laugh. They'd be like, "Ugh, one of your fucking like weirdo stands is prank calling us." <laughs> I'd be like, "I'm not. I'm not even kidding. I prep my. I prep my boss and my the people I work for. I told them it's like about my online work, and I said like, yeah. So the way things work is, if I ever got docs, you guys would probably get a bunch of calls saying I'm like a raper and then I'm a fucking <laughs> I'm a Nazi and then I I, I hate the blacks." And, <laughs> and and they're like, oh yeah, well we don't see you that way, so and we like we wouldn't believe that. I love how I'd confidently like... you said that in their voice, like, oh we 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 don't believe that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You gotta have you have to have a little bit of doubt. That's when you start whipping out the 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 really racist jokes at work, and then everyone goes. No, it's fine. We already know. He gave us a preface. <laughs> yeah. Once you get them in, get enough racist jokes in, then then they know that you're super not racist. That's how it works. <laughs> or you know, you live in a place where like people really don't care in the middle of fucking the Midwest where it's a flyover state. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Well, like, and also like kitchens are. I don't know if people know what like life is like in a kitchen or the atmosphere and stuff like that, but it's usually pretty like blunt and everybody's a little bit unhinged. Like, like mentally well people don't you typically work in kitchens. I'll just say that. I mean, like it's <laughs> we're it's on the like, floor, man. Being a server for like yeah. eight, seven years, like that shit's awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's uh, you'd be surprised that the people who work in the customer service industry aren't exactly all there. So, I mean, there's a lot of, like, really, like, edgy humor that goes on in the back and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Like, some stuff that would just, like, absolutely get you fired from, like, a regular office job. But, yeah, it's not it's not there. Like, HR doesn't exist, almost. I'll throw, I'll throw out an example to support your story, but I'm not going to say where it happened. Okay. Uh, I would love to because I hate the, the manager, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh... Somebody threw back a uh, a country fried steak because they didn't want they didn't want the gravy on it and they didn't okay. tell the waiter they only told it when the when the thing came out so uh, one of the cooks like straight up just stared at the waiter waiter for like I don't know a solid minute while they were like just explaining that they looked at the fucking country fried steak they grabbed it by hand went to the fucking dish pit used the sprayer sprayed the gravy off threw what? it in the fryer and then fucking put it back on the plate oh my god yeah <laughs> that's that that sounds crazy to like any normal person but like uh, that's that's not unheard of from what i've seen either it's like that's yeah shit like that happens it's it, <laughs> it scares people i've told like regular people or, or like civvies. We we call them normies. <laughs> normies. Yeah. Um, 
to, to, I've, I've told normies stories about what happens in the kitchens and stuff like that and like I, i've literally been on dates and i told them about uh the kitchen and they asked me about like i literally just got off my shift i took this girl out we went to like a tea house and we're sitting there and, and she's asking me it's like i think that people imagine that if you work in in a relatively nice re restaurant that what happens in the back of the kitchen is like a lot nicer it's 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 just the exact shit that you would see and like those really really high-end new york posh michelin star kitchens where like ever like everyone is using like fucking tongs to pick everything up and it, everything is like an art form like everyone's taking like 50 minutes to create a plate and it looks like an actual work of art everybody thinks it's like very delicate and stuff and there is that there is an element of that to an extent like when you're plating you do have to like implement this delicacy and, and and like you have to and it's not to that extent it's not like you're fucking you're cr you're cr creating like i don't know a, a fucking sculpture and when i told her about my day and it was just this is just what happened to me that day it wasn't even the, the worst day in that kitchen but i told her that i was put on a position i was put in a position on the line that i wasn't like familiar with and I hadn't fully adjusted to, and I was just kind of thrown to the wolves, because that will happen. You will just suddenly, oh, now you're working on plating. Good luck. It, no training whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and I was thrown in, into plating, and the person who was working on the pans started fucking up, and then they fucked me up, and then we had a customer work walk out, and I, like, had a fucking breakdown like i threw down my and like i like and at, okay like this is gonna and again this is gonna sound horrible to any layman but in the kitchen this is like this just happens this is just like how like things i like i fucking like blew up at her i didn't like scream at her but like i threw down my ray i looked her in the eyes and i said it's like because you're a fuck up they walked out and that looks bad on me and i walked outside and i like punched a concrete wall and like screamed and that sounds like i have anger issues but that is just what happens sometimes in the kitchen that like i'm not even like the like you can. i'm not even like the aggressive one in the kitchen that was like that that was just me venting sometimes you got and like here's the best part i did that i did it alone where nobody could see me and i went right back into the kitchen i I pulled her aside i apologize for what i said i said it's like hey i'm sorry but like we can't have people walking out that looks bad for us that looks bad for me it looks bad for you like we need to be on top of this i'm sorry i got aggressive like i didn't scream at her i wasn't even like i wasn't even like putting out this like threatening aura i just looked at her and i i was just disappointed i just said like you fucked up and i walked out and like i just and i told this girl that I was like, yeah, but like, you know, because everyone in the kitchen is super passionate. Sometimes we can be a little bit unhinged, but like nobody's ever dangerous. And if those people are, we cut them out. It's like, but you know, like, in fact, we're that way because we're passionate about the food that we make. We're passionate about how customers feel. We're passionate about everyone getting exactly what they want and being happy and fulfilled by it. And when that doesn't happen... It looks bad on it, it. It hurts you on a personal level. It's like the artist in you crying out. I'm the same way with a video. I would have the exact same reaction. I did with that fucking uh, just because of a stock image that I couldn't buy. Yeah. I literally was like, I just got so fed up and I threw down. The, I literally threw in the towel, and I just went like, well, fuck it. It's not happening. Fuck. And like, I, I'm frustrated. And I told this to this girl. Yeah, I, I didn't see her after that because <laughs> she's like, I guess I came across as like really aggressive but like i'm not it's just in that one isolated moment i was because that's because like i was being super passionate and other people in the kitchen are just like that too i'm not saying that it's like 100 percent okay i should have handled that situation a little bit better yeah. like again i kept my temper at least around that person like i had to go outside and like kick a wall and and yell but uh that's that that's the extent of it like, I've seen people get really fucking crazy aggressive in the kitchen. But that's just, like, that is the reality of it. People I don't. People are, like, shocked when they watch, like, Hell's Kitchen and there's people screaming at each other. And even that's not the reality of what's, like, in the kitchen. Yeah, it's all cut it's up just to make, like, oh, yeah. Because, of course, they wouldn't show them just joking around in the kitchen and having fun. Hell's Kitchen is meant to be edited so that it's, like, this high-tension thing. 
Yeah, it, it's it's edited to be high tension, and it's also at the end of the day, it's a fucking game show. It's in t- it's a it's a every one of those people are versing each other in the kitchen. It's all about everyone working in tandem with each other. Because like, don't you find that kind of fucking strange that everyone in that kitchen is technically supposed to be a versus? It's a fucking battle royale. Yeah, but uh, but they constantly scream at their teams. You guys need to work together. You need to get in sync and all that sort of shit. It's so contradictory. That's the reason. I think that's half the reason why kitchens do like the, the kitchen staff do so poorly on that show is because it's drilled into their head. Like, look out for number one, number one. Fuck everyone else. Throw them into the gutter. Whatever. It's about you. You need to win. It like the, and then, like the ego gets so bloated, and then they t- and then they start to fall apart because they're not working in tandem. They're not working as a team, and that's always the cause of all their fucking problems in the kitchen. It's because they're not working as a team, and, and they know, and the producers know that that causes drama. You drill one thing in their head, and you like the only way that it can work is the exact opposite of that. Yeah, yeah. Every every bad kitchen I ever worked in was because people were out of sync. That's that's it. The the boss was shitty and it and was a complete hypocrite or something which affected everyone else below them or the people in the kitchen just didn't mesh. Like they would not they would be it, it always takes it just one person to be like no, fuck you. I do my own thing to fuck up everybody. There's a weak link that fucking breaks the chain. Kitchens really just want like a kitchen staff like the line is just people who really just want to work in tandem and work well together because that's that's a functional kitchen. Yeah. So when I t- when I tell stories about people yelling and screaming like that, it's in the moment and then they're over it and then they bury it and they get back on that line and they fucking muscle through. That's that's always what it is. No matter how angry somebody gets, the best thing you can do is just get it out and then get back on there and fucking muscle through it. And that's usually what happens and then we pull through and it's amazing and it's fu- it fucking drinks for everybody. We did a good job. Yeah. yeah, and it's just it's beautiful when it can work together. It's just I've oh seen. Oh my god, it is like the Asian lady feel... that I fucking that I love. She, <laughs> yeah, she had okay. So let me let me throw this this setup for you. We have me as a prep cook dishwasher. We have a sushi chef, which is the 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 chef's son. She he mainly works sushi. And then we have the the hand prep cook and first hand. Uh, pagan a great guy fucking love him and she is about four foot eight wearing slip-on platform shoes and when it gets to like she she walked like she did this for years and she she is like absolutely a maniac on like six different stove tops and everything and flat top grills oh my god everything high top and and when it gets tense and they worked in tandem, I loved it because, like, I was like, I, I want to help and everything like that. They immediately just, the guy, the prep cook just looks at me and just like, get the fuck out of the way. Get out. Get out. Yeah. You're not going up to speed. You're not going fast enough. Get out. Yeah. All right. I, I think, I think, a, do you well, want to end on a high note, I guess? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Since I, you know, getting some more information about, like, you know, how you are and what your passions are, I would think that it'd be great to end with a note about your future, your dreams. Pitch me a, I guess, a film or a documentary that you would want to make in the near future. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, a documentary? Okay. Or or just a regular Um... film. Oh, oh, actually, okay, okay, okay. Actually, I do have, I do have something in mind. Okay. I will talk about this. I, I can't go into too much detail, but there is the, the passion project that I want to make, like the dream film. And I've been work, and I've been interested about this since high school, and I've been slowly working on this script, like not real extensively, because I feel like I want to put more thought and let it, um, like almost like ferment and grow more than just write something down on the page because i've made that mistake in the past i've tried to make a very ambitious project i read it i I wrote everything out prior and then all of a sudden my mind kept changing i was growing as a person and an artist and i kept going back and making adjustments and i adjusted it to the point where it was a fucking frankenstein monster um but this project that i want to make 
has been kind of in the works since high school and it's an adaptation of one of my favorite short stories of all time and i like this is the ultimate if i could make enough money if i like if i could uh it's the back pocket passion project and i've been wanting to make this film for so many fucking years and i would love to make it someday before i i, I perish or i can't do it or i've missed the chance in the meantime though i do have some sort of like current relevant projects that i want to work on one is um going to be turned into a graphic novel no. i have to write the script i have to write the script and i'm really fucking passionate about this one it's another adaptation actually of a another uh, uh another written story it's got a, it's just like it doesn't reflect it too much, but it certainly is an adaptation. Um, it's called Demon of Men, and it's most likely going to be c turned into a comic or a graphic novel. And I'm going to be most likely working on that with... So I won't guarantee that this comes out, but I would love for this to come out. I'm working on this with uh, Minnie, that's M-E-N-I-I, -I, who works on my thumbnails. She's an amazing artist. I think I, I fucking love her style and I'd love for us to work on this project together. And um, I feel like I can bang out the script probably within the year. So expect something within the next couple of years where it's like this uh, graphic novel. And I think that's just gonna be fucking cool. I think that it, it, it suits perfectly in a graphic novel setting because I, I can't imagine how the fuck we would film this. It's not too fantastical. You could turn this into a film for sure. But there's no way in hell I'm ever going to have enough money. See, like, I'm trying to save money for the back pocket project. Yeah. Um, and that's reasonable because it's not too fantastical. It's like, it's kind of like a drama and like nothing. There's no amazing effects. But this smaller project, a lot of effects, a lot of like things that I think they could only really be done properly on the like pen and paper. And then there is an even smaller project. This is a short horror film that I want to make. And I think that that could be done at some point, but I'm going to need, like, I think it would take five grand to make the entire thing. I was actually talking about this during a stream. Um, I, I'll drop the name of it, sort of drop the name of the other project anyways, but the working title of uh, the graphic novel was Demon of Men, and the working title of the short film that I want to make which uh, is Voyeur. And it's a pretty much like I just on the title alone, you can kind of get a sense of what it's about. Um, but yeah, I want to do like a really fucking creepy um, short horror film to do with like a voyeur or something like that. Okay. Because like because I'm obsessed with like camera equipment and stuff like that. And like we, we also live in a day and age where we watch people all the time. It's not going to be like that social media politically charged or relevant. I'm just saying like. It's it's gonna be an allegory for like how comfortable we are for with watching people and stuff and how pe comfortable people are with being watched. Yeah, is kind of the theme of it. And it could be super easy. Like five grand would pay for all the food, catering, all the actors, all the equipment that we'd have to rent, which wouldn't be much since I already have most of it. We'd only have like the one camera, but uh, you can still make a film with just one camera. You can, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's easier when you got two, but hey, if fucking Quentin Tarantino uses one camera, then and he's got like how high of budgets? Yeah, I can do it. Why not? Um, that's essentially it. And I think it would be like a realistically, it would be like a five day shoot. We'd need uh three or four main actors, and then something like seven extras. And that's it. That is it. And it's super minimalist. It's so minimalistic, it can be done. Uh, and yeah, so Voyeur, I would love to get that fucking short film out. That would kick off some real shit. And I think people would start taking me like fairly seriously. And myself, that's another thing. I'd take my, if I can complete this competently, I think I'd take myself serious as a filmmaker from there on out. Whereas like from everything prior has just been like, like artsy little pet projects. All right. No, yeah. that's good. That's that. That's an optimistic sort of future and where I want to see myself go. Good, and, man. Uh, yeah. I, I want to see it for you, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um. Any any more plugs you you want to put out there? I know your own. Any. I, I'm just gonna say it again because I can't fucking throw her enough praise. But Minnie, uh, she her her um her Twitter is my uniques. Um. Her name is spelled M E N I I. 
amazing artist. She does commission work. Uh, fucking, she draws really gorgeous, hot 10 out of 10 girls. You would like her, get her to make you an avatar, anything. She needs the money. She's amazing. 10 out of 10. Um, Tom, 5000, who's been my editor for a long time. He's fucking awesome. You can find him on Twitter under the same sort of name. Just, just T-O-M, 5000. Um, uh, oh, uh, Chase Face. I just, just, just cuz. He's bigger, he's bigger than me, but I'll just give him a fucking shout out because he's a fucking absolute chad. Yeah. Um, Chase Face, amazing content creator. He's fucking awesome. You should check out David Firth if you haven't seen him. Any kind of personal, who do I know? Uh, ooh. Uh, uh, oh, my friend Acris. Um, uh, a h k r i s he's makes like um breakdown videos of video games he's doing kingdom hearts right now his videos by the time you see this his video is going to drop he's a really good personal friend of mine he's just putting his foot in the door of youtube so the more love you send this guy the better it'll kind of encourage him to keep making videos because he gets a little bit discouraged because it's hard for newer content creators to sort of like actually take off these days so the more love and appreciation that boy gets, the better. Um, and also another personal friend of mine, um, uh, J the Jam Plan or Jam Plan. Uh, you can find her on Twitter. She does let's plays uh, in, in gaming streams. She d she does gaming videos kind of in the same sort of vein as me. And she's an also she's also a fellow Vancouverite. She lives here in Vancouver, and we're good friends. We hang out, and she's fucking hilarious. Uh, I think you'd really like her stuff and her sense of humor. She's like currently playing the Colonel Sanders dating sim, Ooh, and it's just—it's a fucking boy. good time. <laughs> That's about it, I think, I, I, in terms of plugs. All right, yeah. And so you. that was my guest, uh, Mark English, or by his main yeah. YouTube channel, Mark After Dark. Um, I'm a very dark boy. Stay away from me. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right. Hi, this is Adarna Nagra in my post, in my uh, post recording now editing stage saying that I um, uh, just recently got the news that Mark uh, was recently let go from his um, job with a 24-hour notice due to the recent uh, epidemic and everything. Um, and since his place is closing down, he's only going to be able to subsist off Patreon money and donations. So... Go show him some love. Go do everything. I'm going to throw his links in the description. I mean, I was going to do that anyway, but let's, uh, you know, just making a good note of it. Also, giving some real good credit for him. Uh, for uh, Minnie, his artist, is uh, his artist for his thumbnails and everything. She does great work. Uh, Mark plugged her quite a bit in the in both the ending and the beginning of the interview but i just want to say once again yes i'll double down on it and say yeah she does really great art and um she would probably love show some love she's going through a bit of a rough spot right now so you know show some love and um go to mini it she's at my uniques and uh that should be good again thanks to mark for for being so nice and getting this interview for me you know I'm, I'm pretty much nobody so feels really good um i'll put my links and socials and in in, down in the description below right at the bottom because these two people probably need more uh attention than i do right now so all right well you guys have a wonderful evening stay safe and you know wash your hands don't touch your face and uh, have a good night.